In at number 10, David Letterman. Several old interview clips of David Letterman's have resurfaced in the last year, and many are saying that he crossed major lines. One example was with Lindsay Lohan in 2013. She did the interview recently out of rehab, and Letterman persistently asked her questions about it, even though she made it clear that she didn't want to be asked about it. However, he unfortunately kept pressing, leading her to cry. Next, he did an unfortunate interview with Janet Jackson. Letterman was pressing her about her infamous Super Bowl incident, asking her questions about how her wardrobe malfunction came to be. Right after she was asked about it, she replied, quote, I don't want to relive any of that. But Letterman kept asking, well, Jackson looked like she wanted to be anywhere but there. This is literally the tip of the iceberg and there are so many more horrendous moments with women that took place on his show. And at number nine, Michael Jordan. Basketball legend Michael Jordan is the idol of many who love the sport but there's apparently a very rude and entitled side of him that one golf caddy saw firsthand. Allegedly, this golf caddy was caddying for Jordan the whole day. And at the end of the long and I'm sure stressful day, all the other players tip their caddies as that's the custom in golf. However, Michael Jordan did not tip his caddy and the caddy's first thought was that maybe Jordan was like unhappy with him and maybe he did a bad job for him. So he asked Jordan if everything was good and he allegedly responded, quote, what do you want, a tip? You should feel lucky to carry my clubs. And when rich people don't tip, it truly just ticks me off to a whole other level. Like the entitlement is just so crazy. And at number eight, Dove Cameron. Dove Cameron is a Disney star who is beloved by many for her kind personality. However, many fans were shocked to learn that she definitely has a mean side. One incident happened when a fan tweeted out saying how their goal in life was to have Dove notice her. And while that goal was achieved, but not in the way that she hoped. Dove ended up responding savagely to the fan, saying, quote, that's a very small and unimportant life goal. And maybe if I notice you, you'll realize how unfulfilling that is and turn your phone off because celebrities don't matter. Go find yourself in nature and create your own life philosophy. Aim higher, babe. And if you interpret what she's saying the way that Dove was probably intending, it can be implied here that Dove just wanted the fan to realize that being noticed by Dove, you know, wouldn't help her in life in any way and to stop putting so much meaning on it. But obviously the way Dove said it was really harsh and if I was the fan, I probably would have been heartbroken. And at number seven, Carrie Underwood. This one honestly breaks my heart. This person who has seen a ton of celebrities in their workplace said that Carrie Underwood was by far the worst. They wrote, quote, I worked as a maintenance worker at a concert venue for a few summers and I bumped into several celebrities. But Carrie Underwood is the one who sticks out because of how demanding she always was. She refused to use a toilet if someone else had sat on the seat before her. So we had to buy new toilet seats every time she came. Considering how much we already had to fix, the last thing we wanted to do was pointlessly replace perfectly good toilet seats. In contrast, Reba McIntyre would always eat lunch with the staff and was always super chill. Can you imagine how entitled you have to be to demand like a new toilet basically. I cannot believe the venue agreed to do that for her. And at number six, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is a famous actor and producer that fans might not know that much about. However, many celebrities have shared just how open hearted and kind that he is. Specifically, when Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey after leaving the royals, they shared that they were on the verge of being homeless with no security. However, Tyler Perry offered them his LA home to live in, along with giving them security until they were able to work it out. What an amazing guy, right? Well, apparently, he doesn't treat normal people as nice. A person who worked to promote Perry's movie, Boo a Medea Halloween in 2016, shared his strange behavior and long list of demands. Apparently, Perry flew private to the event with 13 of his staff. They were all forced in the back of the plane while he had the entire front to himself. They added, quote, his team sent our local agency a long list of demands and rules in anticipation of his arrival. Tyler wanted to be addressed referred to as Mr. Perry. We were prohibited to speak to him directly, only to his team. Room temperature orange gate Gatorade had to be in his green room. Furniture wasn't allowed in his press interview suite. All media and press had to travel to him. Mr. Perry would not leave the hotel and he wouldn't wait for anyone. The person added that his entire team seemed terrified of him. Halfway number five, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is a celebrity with mixed reviews. Tons of people say she's down to earth and loves her fans, while others have shared some negative experiences with the star. One person shared their experience working with Minaj on set. Writing, quote, I worked with Nicki Minaj before and while on a set with her, I was told not to look her in the face. She also had people move out of the room before she would come in the room. It was a whole ordeal. And at number four, Miles Teller. Miles Teller being on this list should not be a shock to anyone because he is constantly called out for his horrible behavior. 
Even reporters that have interviewed him have called him entitled and rude. He's even trashed well-loved and respected actors like John Cusack. When a reporter told him they are similar actors, Teller replied, quote, I guess we look alike. We did some similar movies. He wasn't traditionally good looking, who was offbeat and quirky but confident. I get it, but I don't want his career. And people who have met him in real life have had similar experiences. They wrote, quote, I met Miles Teller at a bar. He told my friend to buy him a drink and he still refused to take a picture with him. He ended up smacking my phone out of my hand and I'll never watch a movie with him in it again. And at number two, Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray is someone who I'm not too surprised to see on this list because from watching her show, I never really got the vibe that she was trying to be really nice. The celebrity chef is known for being pretty brutal and she doesn't have much of a filter when dealing with people. That's why negative interactions are pretty common with her. One encounter came from someone who was working in a mall while she was visiting for a book signing. Basically, they were both sitting there just waiting around and there was an awkward silence. And like a lot of other people would have done in that situation, he just decided to, you know, spark up some conversation, make some casual small talk and ask her how her day was going. And apparently without even looking up from her phone, she replied, quote, don't talk to me. Yikes. And at number 10, Oprah. This is one that was incredibly shocking to me because Oprah is one of the most beloved people in the world. And other celebrities are constantly singing her praises, sharing how down to earth and nice Oprah is in real life. But it seems that Oprah might act a little differently when the cameras are not rolling or when she's not talking to another celebrity. A waiter that served Oprah for lunch shared their eye rolling encounter with the TV host. They wrote on Reddit, quote, Oprah didn't tip me on a $200 lunch. Instead, she signed a napkin for me and acted like she was doing me a huge favor. The kicker was when she walked in, they gave away all of my other tables so she didn't have to wait for anything. So I made $4 an hour for two hours for the privilege of serving Oprah. And she went on and on about signing a napkin that I never even asked for. It still makes me so mad when I hear that celebrities do not tip. Like Oprah is a billionaire. She can afford to dip. It's, it's so outrageous. And at number nine, Chevy Chase. This one is less of a shock because it's well known that Chevy Chase is not the greatest guy, although he plays lovable characters on screen. Many of his former SNL castmates have spoken out against him, and he was even banned from the show for his problematic behavior. One Reddit user shared that he is just as awful in real life. They wrote, quote, I saw Chevy Chase at a hotel once as a small nine-year-old, and I love the National Lampoon's Vacation movies. When I asked for his autograph, he verbally went off on me. When my dad came over, he went off on him. He said something messed up, which is that my dad wasn't raising me right. The dude is a straight up jerk. And at number eight, Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson is another star I only ever heard good things about. He was known for being the good guy on American Idol compared to Simon Cowell, who was notoriously savage towards contestants. But this might be another case of a celebrity being completely two-faced, acting nice and friendly while on camera, but being completely different when cameras are not rolling. One Reddit user shared a behind the scenes look at Randy during a children's hospital event. Quote, Randy Jackson was invited to a telethon hosted by a hospital for children with disabilities, where my little sister lived until she passed away. Whenever the cameras were off, he'd hide in his hotel room and seem disgusted with the kids. He didn't want anything to do with them. When the cameras were on though, he was all smiles and hugs. It was so disheartening and disappointing to witness. It was over 10 years ago and I still remember it to this day. Number seven, Russell Crowe. The actor has had a reputation for being outright mean to both his Hollywood peers and his fans, making him an extremely controversial figure in the industry. I mean, where to start with Russell Crowe? There were rumors that he he threatened any media platform that published stories about him having a fling with Courtney Love. But a great example of his overall attitude is when he intimidated and attacked the producer of the BAFTA Awards for cutting his speech short and preventing him from reciting poetry. In 2005, he was then charged with criminal possession of a weapon for allegedly throwing a phone and cutting a hotel clerk's eye, all because he was unable to get connected with his wife. One of the lesser talked about but worrying incidents involves Crow and rapper Aziz Celia Banks. Crow forcibly removed her from a party he was hosting. Not only that, but he was said to have been violent and allegedly spat on her and used racist language. The Australian actor is also notoriously difficult to work with and is known for regularly shouting at his script writers, yelling at them on phone calls while discussing the story. So it's safe to say that he lost not only film roles, but a lot of fans due to his outright nastiness. Number six, Jared Leto. The actor and singer really seem to be getting a lot of backlash in recent years, especially in the era of the Me Too movement. It seemed that out of his fellow Hollywood celebrities, not everyone was willing to be silent when they heard he was behaving inappropriately appropriately towards young women. In 2018, Suit Life of Zack and Cody star Dylan Sprouse came forward on 
Twitter and brought disturbing allegations against him to light. Quote, Yo, Jared Leto, now that you've slid into the DMs of every female model aged 18 to 25, what would you say your success rate is? As you would have predicted, the tweet totally blew up and many people were happy that he was finally getting called out. The situation quickly escalated when Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn tweeted the following as an answer to Sprouse's initial tweet. Quote, He starts at 18 on the internet? Aside from predatory behavior, Leto has treated his fans horribly and was seen on occasion randomly giving the finger to audience members. As a result, he really doesn't have many mainstream fans left, save for the fans of his cult slash band 30 seconds to Mars. Number five, Ellen DeGeneres. She was one of the most popular talk show hosts in the world only a few years ago with fans across the globe. But all that came crashing down for Ellen DeGeneres when she was exposed for being ruthless to her employees when the cameras weren't rolling and just a downright mean-spirited person. Her motto was ironically, be kind, and that completely backfired on her when former employees started coming forward with their Ellen horror stories. In a BuzzFeed article, the comedian was labeled a bully and named as the culprit for creating a toxic work environment by one current and 10 former employees who anonymously gave their true thoughts about her in the article. They essentially confirmed what up until then had only been rumors, with one TV writer claiming that Ellen required anyone who talks to her at work to chew gum from a bowl outside of her office first and that she would frequently send staff home to shower if she thought that they smelled bad. While the accusation haven't hurt her bank balance, Ellen's image has been tarnished forever and you'd have to search the internet for days to find anyone that still supports her. Number 4, Catherine Zeta-Jones. You wouldn't think the actress was someone with a bad attitude, but it appears that's exactly what she has. The most famous story about her happened way back in 1998 when an 8 year old girl was attending a special screening of The Mask of Zorro. She went up to Catherine Zeta-Jones and asked her for some advice on acting, as that is the career path that she wanted to follow. Catherine allegedly looked her up and down and said sarcastically, you're pretty enough, I suppose, before turning back to her conversation. Not to mention what she said in 2018, which really highlighted how she perceives herself. Quote, I'm sick of being humble, I really am. Sorry I'm rich, so sorry I'm married to a movie star, so sorry I'm not so bad looking. In fact, according to Page Six, the actress regularly sings her own praises and brags about how much money she has compared to other people. In 2003, she was quoted saying, a million dollars isn't a lot of money for people like us. I mean, if that wasn't enough, she said, quote, some people collect art or lots of money. We collect houses because if we have to look at something, we prefer the beauty. Yeah, most people were not jumping to support the actress with a track record of saying things like that. And number three, Jim Belushi. One fan shared just how terrible Jim Belushi was to them after they waited hours for an autograph. To make it worse, one of Belushi's co-stars was incredibly nice and made the contrast even worse. They wrote, quote, years ago us kids waited for Jim Belushi and John Candy after they shot Only the Lonely in Chicago. I asked Belushi for an autograph and he literally called us a bunch of pieces of stupid kids and to get the F out of there. Then came Candy with a big old smile and a cigar hanging out of his mouth. And he spent the next 10 minutes signing autographs and thanking all of his fans. In at number two, Alec Baldwin. Given all the scandals that Alec Baldwin has been in, it's no surprise that he's notoriously rude. He's attacked paparazzi, gotten in physical fights with hecklers, and he's been known to be very arrogant. One Reddit user spoke of their interaction and wrote, quote, one day in the Hamptons, I ran into Alec Baldwin and his wife and their two dogs. I was six, so I wanted to pet their dogs. Mind you, they left their dogs outside of the store, so I didn't know they were theirs. They quickly yanked their dogs away from me and yelled at me. I was six. That just proves the kind of people they are. I mean, who gets mad at a kid for petting a dog that you left outside? At number 10, Rihanna. Rihanna might seem like a nice, happy-go-lucky person who's always going hard for her fans, but it turns out that she actually has a little bit of a dark side. I guess you could say that she's savage. Like, Savage X Fenty. No? All right. It seems like on a few occasions, she's been quite mean to her fans. She's no stranger to shoving a phone out of her face when approached by a fan, and she's been known to yell at paparazzi and fans when they get a little too close for comfort. On some more unpleasant occasions, she's been filmed smacking a fan on the head with a microphone. During one of her concerts in England in 2013, the singer whacked a fan with her mic because they had reached their hand out to her. Like that. 
And in another Savage incident, Rihanna mocked a 16 year old fan online for having recreated one of her red carpet looks for prom, where she called her out on Twitter and made fun of her look, calling it expectation versus reality, and posing a side by side comparison. Not the nicest person in the industry, that's for sure. At number 9, Ezra Miller. This one was a little shocking, but it turns out that Ezra Miller might not be as nice of a guy as we think. You may have seen in the intro a video of Ezra Miller choking and slamming a woman to the ground. This video, when it first hit the internet, was thought to have been a joke, but it really wasn't. This happened during an altercation at a bar in Iceland when a group of fans approached the actor and things got out of hand. Bystanders of the incident described the group as being very pushy, and it seemed like this was what triggered Ezra violent reaction. Things escalated and he lost his temper, leading to the physical altercation. Some say that alcohol may have contributed to the incident, but the bottom line is that Ezra's outburst was not cute and it really surprised a lot of fans. Just before I continue on with the video, I'd like to ask you guys to maybe consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far. We love getting your positive feedback and your likes really help us out too, so please go ahead and show us some love by smashing that like button. At number 8, Jennifer Lopez. This probably doesn't come as a shock to many, but it turns out that JLo isn't a very nice person. Some say that she's a real diva and others say that she's just rude. Apparently the singer slash actress is very picky about who may or may not speak to her and for those permitted to address her, they're not allowed to make eye contact with her. There are even reports that she sometimes flat out refuses to comply with scripts. This has happened on a few occasions, most notably during a filming for a Fiat commercial where they needed to hire a double for Jennifer simply because she just didn't want to do certain things for the shoot. She doesn't have a good reputation with a lot of people she's worked with either. She is said to have completely ignored the people who were remodeling her house, she's gotten a cleaning lady fired for having asked for an autograph and she even refuses to talk to in-flight staff and pilots on flights and instructs her assistant to talk to them for her. And even though her staff do so much for her, including communicating for her, they don't get paid very much for their time. JLo just gives off bad vibes, so I think maybe it's best to stay clear of her whenever possible. At number 7, Bill Murray. Bill Murray has a bad reputation in Hollywood for his poor behavior on set, so it's no surprise to me to find out that he's actually bullied one of his cast mates on the set of Charlie's Angels. While filming the movie, Bill Murray was said to have antagonized actress Lucy Liu. When watching the film, you'd think that they were all good friends and on good terms, but that's quite the opposite. In reality, it was a sort of hostile work environment that caused Bill to take on a dislike towards Lucy. Turns out, Bill would insult Lucy's talent and acting ability, and on one occasion even said, quote, I get why you're here, you've got talent, but what in the hell are you doing here, you can't act. Apparently the harassment and bullying got so bad at one point that Lucy tried throwing punches at Bill during one scene because its insults got so bad. This antagonizing went on for the entire duration of production and Bill kept on berating Lucy about her presence on set and calling her unprofessional as well. Bill Murray is one mean guy. I mean he's admitted to being mean but man he's got some seriously bad vibes. At number 6, Ellen DeGeneres. I think this one's a little obvious because it's Ellen. We've done a lot of videos on Ellen. Ellen has been exposed as one of the meanest people in Hollywood. Even though she was all about kindness and spreading good vibes on her show, it seems like Ellen's angel persona on TV was quite the opposite in real life. Many staff members as well as other people who have been on the show with her and have worked with her in the past have started coming forward to talk about Ellen's mean streak in Hollywood. It turns out that there are some workplace horrors afoot over on the Ellen Show set, with people claiming that you're not allowed to look Ellen in the eye and those who approach her are often spoken to rudely or even face racial biases. Also, there seems to be some kind of drama with the toilets on set. I guess people's butts are very prestigious or something. <laughs> there have been reports of Ellen getting people in trouble for having chipped nail polish, for giving away fan mail, and apparently there's a rumor that Ellen picks one member of staff to be mean to every day. Lovely person, isn't she? Halfway through at number 5, Mike Myers. Mike Myers isn't really doing much in Hollywood these days and I think I might know why. It's because he's so mean. There have been a number of horror stories to come out about the actor which sort of paints him as both a diva and just a really mean person in general. Some of the things that have come out about the actor include rumors that when he's on set he has someone following him around all day feeding him chocolates from a Tupperware container at the same time as ordering other people around and micromanaging the production. And as if that's bad enough, he's also reportedly gotten an actor fired off set for only having made eye contact with Mike. That is some seriously mean 
mean and toxic behavior. On top of that, he's allegedly refused to sign autographs for a toy company who made toys based on his characters. And even though he demanded that this company ship him his merchandise as soon as it was ready, he then refused to pay for them. People also describe him as a narcissist and controlling, so no wonder no one wants to work with him anymore. At number four, Leah Michelle. Leah Michelle is another celebrity who's been exposed for her mean streak this year. Following a Twitter exposure from former Glee co-star Samantha Ware, Leah has now been described as quote, callous, rude, mean, and even a diva. But Samantha's exposure of the Broadway star isn't the only testimony that has come forward recounting her mean streak. There have been stories of Leah's microaggressions, but also stories of her spitting in craft service food, refusing to work with people because they didn't know her middle name, requesting reshoots because she didn't like her costume, disrespecting other castmates, and having crew members apologize on her behalf, and just so many other frustrating tidbits that just really show how rude and entitled she's known to be. At number three, Ariana Grande. I honestly thought that Ariana Grande was a really nice person. She's pretty soft spoken and seems like she's really kind, but according to people who've worked with or interacted with the singer, it's not exactly true. She's apparently so bad that even her life coach quit on her. So you know something's up. Apparently Ariana makes some high demands from the positioning of lighting to being in the right position when people come to see her or take photos with her. She's also gotten backlash for her attitude from people she's worked with in the past, like Victoria Justice and Jeanette McCurdy. Jeanette has called Ariana a leech and a drama queen, and Victoria has accused Ariana of bullying her on set. Ariana was also involved in that donut licking incident which painted her as a disrespectful person and she's been accused of using her relationships to further her career, along with being involved in some cheating scandals on two accounts, one while with Jay Brooks and another when she was with Mac Miller. The bottom line with Ariana is that she's not the nice girl she pretends to be. At number two, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal seems to be this super great guy who's given back to his community, donated to all these charities, and has done a lot of work to benefit a lot of people. I I mean, the guy has a whole foundation in his name. So this one might be a little controversial, but this was news to me, so I thought I'd share it with the class. There was an incident in 2014 when Shaq mocked the appearance of a man named Jamal Binion. Jamal suffers from a rare genetic condition which has resulted in some facial deformities. It seems like Shaq saw a picture of him online and recreated the image himself, posing his face to look like that of Jamal. Well, he didn't think it was very funny, and even though Shaq apologized, it wasn't enough, and so he issued a lawsuit against the basketball star, as well as two other people who mocked his condition for $25,000 in damages. The lawsuit claimed that the image was shared to nearly 10 million people around the world, so this public mocking was grounds for seeking damages. Shaq may not be a mean guy all of the time, but this instance sure did open a lot of people's eyes to the NBA star's actions. And finally at number one, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey isn't the nicest person ever. She's had run-ins with the paparazzi, which have not gone over well. She's had some bad relationships with others, and she's known to be something of a diva. But this? Oh, this takes the cake. There was a lawsuit from one of Mariah's former assistants, which claimed that the singer peed on her, ridiculed her body, and then called her some pretty rude names. Her former assistant said that she was hired by the singer to be on call 24-7 and assisted both Mariah and her manager. Though she was paid a salary of $250,000 a year, this wage just couldn't cover up the alleged abuse sustained by Mariah. But her case wasn't the only one up against the singer at the time. While this case was being disputed, Mariah had just settled one with her former manager which cited breach of contract, harassment, and unpaid wages. It seems like though she pays her people well, she doesn't treat them as well as she should. Now I've gotta know which celebrity shocked you the most out of this list. For me, I'm gonna have to say Shaq. I never heard of this lawsuit until I was researching for this video, so that was super surprising. Number 10, Leah Michelle. The actress who played the most arrogant character on Glee has recently been outed as being one of the meanest celebrities in Hollywood. The music TV series that helped Leah Michelle rise to fame was also her undoing, as it looks like the horrible way she treated the cast and crew on set came back to bite her. Many of her peers, including actress Samantha Ware, spoke out against her behavior. She told Variety, quote, it was after I did my first performance. That's when it started. The silent treatment, the stare downs, the looks, the comments under her breath, the weird passive aggressiveness. It all built up. After Samantha spoke out, dozens of co-stars, film crew and staff flooded social media with stories about the diva. There were even reports of Michelle
Chanel only speaking to people through her assistant and not acknowledging her co-star's presence. As expected, she came out and issued an apology, but people still haven't forgotten about her atrocious behaviour, and when it was announced that she was replacing fellow actress Beanie Feldstein in the Broadway production of Funny Girl, fans were up in arms and some have even called for a boycott. Number 9. Mike Myers His name is synonymous with the hilarious and charismatic character Austin Powers. However, the actor is reportedly completely different in real life, especially on set. There have been numerous reports suggesting that Myers is a nightmare to work with, with some even claiming him to be a control freak and grumpy. It has come to light that the actor makes tons of demands of his assistants. In fact, Myers reportedly made life a daily nightmare for the cast and crew of one of his biggest films. According to Amy Hill, who was his co-star in The Cat in the Hat, she said it was a horrible, nightmarish experience. Hill claimed that he selfishly kept everyone waiting for hours, overruled the director, and even had someone standing by just holding his personal chocolates in a dish. Quote, It was so weird. It was just the worst. I was miserable. Another story involves a fan that offered to buy the actor a drink. After telling Myers how much he enjoyed his work, Myers allegedly just looked at him and said, I can afford my own drinks, cursed at him and said, save your money for my next movie. Ouch. Apart from being notoriously difficult to work with, his mean-spirited attitude towards regular people have shrunk his fan base down to a fraction of what it used to be. Number 8. Rachel Ray The celebrity cook has a reputation for being a meanie. Many fans in her audience have reported that before filming her show, she often avoids speaking to them and appears cold and disinterested, and just looks like she would rather be somewhere else. But it's not just her fans, in fact, several famous chefs have publicly come out saying that they straight up don't like her, like Martha Stewart and the late Anthony Bourdain. Even members of Ray's own family have turned against her. In 2013, scandal broke out after Ray's aunt, Geraldine, tragically died while staying at Ray's house. But neither Ray nor her husband John showed up at the funeral. Instead, she was allegedly tweeting about cats, recipes and TV shows, which led her cousin, Gina Mesnick, to speak out against her. Quote, I found it very insensitive and inappropriate. It just shows how demeaning Rachel was to my family on the day we buried my mom after she died under such horrible circumstances. Her fan base is now practically non existent. In fact, a good portion of the internet harbors deep loathing for the chef. There's so many online forums dedicated to Rachel Ray slander. In fact, there's even a blog called Rachel Ray Sucks, and you can guess what kind of things people post on there. And at number seven, Terry Hatcher. This one breaks my heart because. I'm a huge fan of Desperate Housewives. I'm currently rewatching it right now. I'm on season eight, if anyone's wondering. But apparently, on the set of the hit show, she was known as the Mean Girl, and all the leading ladies got along except for her. One of her co stars told the creator of Desperate Housewives that she was the quote, meanest woman in the world. She was not only a pain on the show, but on practically all of her projects. And she now has a reputation for a bad attitude. Back when she was filming Tomorrow Never Dies, co-star Pierce Brosnan called her out for never being on time. Luckily, she's a good enough actress that people put up with her bad attitude on set. In number 6, Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan has a reputation for being controversial and saying whatever's on his mind, regardless of the consequences. But this behavior has earned him a reputation of being mean, specifically towards Meghan Markle. And there's actually a dating story behind it that makes the whole thing even more juicy. Apparently, the two went on a date and Meghan ghosted him afterwards, spawning his hatred of her. Most recently, after Meghan's explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey, Piers did not hold back, trashing her on Good Morning Britain. Before him, the other host could even discuss the topic. He went on raging about how the interview is tarnishing the reputation of Britain around the world and hurting everything the Queen has worked so hard for. After the outrage from viewers, Piers decided to step down from the show. Halfway number 5, Kiefer Sutherland. Apparently, Sutherland had a lot in common with his 24 character, Jack Bauer, as both of them constantly got on the nerves of their colleagues. According to an interview with Freddie Prinze Jr., he claimed that Sutherland was very unprofessional and he hated working with him on 24. Prince Jr. said, quote, I did 24, it was terrible. I hated every moment of it, with him adding that Sutherland was the most unprofessional person that he ever worked with. And he felt so sternly about it, he would say it to his face if he ever confronted him about it. Another co-star also spoke about her disdain for Sutherland, saying that working with him was very hard because he's a very angry person. 
angry with himself and others, which he took out on anyone who got in his way. In at number four, Patrick Dempsey. McDreamy was the lovable and kind hero in the hit show Grey's Anatomy, but his behavior when the cameras were not rolling was completely different. And apparently he was such a diva, he ended up being fired from the show. Shonda Rhimes, the show's creator, head writer, executive producer, and showrunner, announced that she adopted a quote, no a-holes policy, apparently after working with Dempsey. Allegedly, a big part of the reason that he was fired is because he was disrespectful to the crew of the show. When he was killed off the 15th season, fans were shocked, but those close to the show knew it was a long time coming. A source close to the situation told Radar Online that Rhymes had no choice but to fire Dempsey. Quote, he had been showing up late and was holding up production because he couldn't remember his lines. Number three, Katherine Heigl. Television, medical drama, Grey's Anatomy catapulted Katherine Heigl into the limelight. The thing is, she has a reputation of being extremely unpleasant to work with. And after trashing her most popular movie ever, she lost a whole bunch of fans. I'm talking about 2007's Knocked Up. It was not just hilarious, but very well received all round, scoring an 89% on Rotten Tomatoes and bringing in $219 million at the box office against a $25 million budget, but Catherine was less than thrilled about her participation in the movie and called the film sexist, telling Vanity Fair in 2008 that she thought the movie, quote, paints women as shrews, as humorless and uptight. It paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun-loving guys. She went on to say that she had a hard time with the film on some days because she said that her character was a B-word and a killjoy. Not only that, but Heigl's bad reputation stems largely from her decision to decline a second Emmy nomination nomination for Grey's Anatomy in 2008. She released a cringy public statement that claimed she simply wasn't given the material this season to warrant an Emmy nomination. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you. Number two, Jamie Lynn Spears. Someone that has lost all support from what little fan base she had to begin with is Jamie Lynn Spears. She's known pretty much as the younger sibling of Britney Spears, but she didn't exactly hide long in her sister's shadow before entering the limelight. Although she made a few appearances in film and television as a child, she didn't receive star status until landing the lead role as Zoe Brooks on the Nickelodeon show Zoe 101. After three years on the very popular show, the then 16-year-old announced that she was pregnant, effectively ending her role and putting her acting career on hiatus. But people dislike the star because of the horrific way she has treated her sister over the years. In fact, fans of Britney have heavily criticized Jamie Lynn for an apparent lack of support during her sister's 14 year long conservatorship. In fact, the former actress has been accused of trying to steal Britney's fortune, fighting against the movement to free her from her conservatorship, and writing tell all books to try and profit off of her sister's name while trying to make her look bad. With Britney now finally able to speak up for herself and reportedly working on her own memoir, it will probably result in even more exposure of Jamie Lynn's horrific behavior. Number one, Faye Dunway. Once called the worst person in Hollywood by Betty Davis, the Academy Award winner is no doubt one of the meanest people in the industry. In 2019, she was actually fired from the Broadway production of Tea at Five because of bizarre behavior which included hurling objects at crew members and slapping her wig fitting team, throwing salad on the floor and even insisting that no one wear white to rehearsal because it's distracting. That's not all, in fact, she reportedly shrieks at service industry employees and thinks that her plane tickets should be upgraded as a matter of principle. A flight attendant once claimed Dunway was screaming at everyone, saying, don't you know who I am? And while filming Chinatown, the actor once reportedly threw a cup of urine on director Roman Polanski because he wouldn't let her use the restroom. In 2019, she was also sued by her former personal assistant, who claimed that she regularly and relentlessly subjected him to, quote, demeaning tirades and used his sexual orientation as a gay man against him. And according to an insider, Dunway was so demonic on the set of Mummy Dearest that no one dead to approach her for fear of being verbally attacked. At number 10, Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray may seem like a happy, fun, and helpful person on TV, but it seems like that's not exactly true. She might seem wholesome while teaching you how to make a casserole, but deep down she's got a dark side. There are a few unpleasant things about Rachel that people have caught on to, including things like being a lousy tipper at restaurants, having allegedly cheated on her husband, and being rude on set. But she's also been accused of more harsh things like making racial remarks about Oprah, the very 
woman who gave her her start. On top of that, she's also talked badly behind the backs of a lot of celebrities, calling them some pretty mean names that I can't repeat on YouTube. And she's also faced lawsuits for her dog food brand containing toxic substances, so not only is she mean to people, but she's mean to dogs too. At number 9, Jared Leto. If you ask the internet what they think about Jared Leto, a surprising amount of people say that he's kind of a jerk. I even found a list that someone made of all of the reasons that make Jared Leto a bad person, and since this individual, along with a number of others, don't like him, I thought I'd include him on this list to get your take on this. Some of the reasons listed as to why Jared sucks so much include the fact that he's been caught being mean to fans, and he's offended the trans community after winning an Oscar for his performance in Dallas Buyers Club, and not mentioning the trans community in his speech, as well as undermining the struggles of the trans community after joking about his appearance in character. Jared has also admitted to lying during interviews whenever possible, and people found his joker antics on the set of Suicide Squad to be a little mean because of the pranks that he would play on people as well as the gifts that he would send to the cast and crew. I know a lot of his fans say that he's good and a genuine guy, but some of his actions say otherwise. What do you guys think? If you guys liked the video so far, please go ahead and leave a thumbs up on the video. Your feedback is really helpful and it helps our channel grow, so go ahead and smash that like button. At number 8, Kanye West. Kanye West isn't the nicest guy out there, I think we all know that. I mean, he's not the worst person, but he also has a knack for offending people. Whether it's on stage or on Twitter, I'm sure we've seen Kanye West be pretty mean and offensive on multiple occasions. Let me highlight a few of his worst moments. Remember the VMA incident where he stole Taylor Swift's spotlight after winning her award? Not nice. How about his claim that slavery was a choice, undermining the struggle of so many black lives lost and abused by enslavement? People also think Kanye is mean because he tries to control what his wife Kim wears, trying to manipulate her style but also forcing her to cover up and not show as much skin. We also have to mention his tweets as well. He's very outspoken online and has a tendency to offend people people a lot. From his claims about Bill Cosby being an innocent man following his allegations, as well as his tweets bashing his own family members, Kanye does not hold back. Some people believe that Kanye is mean because he thinks that he's better than everyone else and doesn't have to worry about other people's feelings as well. At number 7, Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer is sort of a I don't care what people think of me kind of person, which can be a good thing sometimes because it allows you to carry yourself with confidence, however it can also be a bad thing because it prevents you from thinking about how your actions might negatively impact others. An example of this comes from an incident in 2018 where Amy full on stole a comedian's stand up set. The story goes that there was an up and coming comedian who was doing one of his first long sets and obviously this was a really big deal for the guy until Amy ruined it. She walked into the venue and went to the manager to ask if she could steal 10 minutes of stage time because she wanted to practice her new set. Because the other comedian had just started, the manager said no, so Amy hit back with quote, but I'm Amy Schumer. Like that's gonna make a difference. After getting refusals left and right, she marched up on stage and took over his time for a few minutes. I know Amy is a big timer, but come on. You have to remember what it was like to be up and coming and that kind of behavior is just plain rude. At number six, Katherine Heigl. A lot of people don't like Katherine Heigl because of how rude she is. She's been known to be mean to people on set, have high demands, and just has a really bad attitude. She's known to be quite critical of her roles and the material that she's given to work with, and even said that this is why she withdrew from Emmy nominations because she said that the material that she was given for Grey's Anatomy didn't warrant an Emmy. That's certainly disrespectful to the writers because for someone to say something like that implies that the writing wasn't good enough to please people, whereas the people at the Emmys thought that it was worth the award. And on top of that, winning this kind of award looks good for the team, but Catherine obviously didn't think of that and she only thought about herself. Talk about a bad attitude. Catherine is also known to make ridiculously high salary demands and she apparently has been doing this since before she became a big name in the industry. She's reportedly hired and fired a lot of publicists and assistants over the years, so she sounds like quite the diva. Because of all this, directors and Hollywood execs don't want to work with her anymore and I can't really say I blame them. Halfway through at number 5, Christian Bale. Christian Bale's temper is really something to behold. I really wanted to include a clip of one of his outbursts, but there was so much swearing that no one has time to bleep all of that. 
After his outburst on set from crew members upsetting him to fans getting him riled up, Hollywood has begun to paint the actor as someone with serious anger issues. In one instance, according to Christian's former assistant, he once wanted to kill a fan. Fans seem to have really upset the actor on multiple occasions, so apparently once Christian received a fan letter at home, he said that the fan should be eliminated. He described wanting to thrust a screwdriver through the fan's eye and into their brain to the part that prevents screaming. I'll let that one sit there for a second. On another occasion, Christian went on a four minute swear word ridden tirade where he really chewed out a crew member from the set of Terminator Salvation. That one I have no quotes for because if I repeated any of those words, this video would be flagged and just, just trust me when I say Christian Bale is one mean SOB. At number four, Zoe Deschanel. Zoe Deschanel plays fun, bubbly, and happy characters in TV and in films, but her real personality is far from nice. Turns out that Zoe is actually pretty mean in real life. Her biggest thing is brushing off or being mean to her fans. According to one fan on Reddit, she allows some fans to talk to her, but only for a brief amount of time, if that. And she doesn't do pictures or autographs, and she'll just walk away from you if she wants to. People who have worked with the actress have also said that she's got a bad attitude on set, and that she's pretty stuck up and has a big ego. Others say that she demands a lot, throws tantrums about literally anything, and has a reputation for delaying shoots, but will go off on anyone else who makes demands or delays shoots. Double standards here. Basically, she's got a bad attitude, and that's one of the reasons why she doesn't get cast much anymore, because no one wants to work with her. At number three, Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts seems like a nice person. She's always cast as nice and endearing characters, but there's so much more to Julia than meets the eye. Apparently, she's a nightmare to work with. Other than having been part of some messy relationships and having been dubbed as a homewrecker at one point, Julia's bad attitude doesn't just take place off set. In 1991, on the set of the Spielberg film Hook, a Peter Pan film, Julia earned the nickname Tinker Hell as a play on her character Tinkerbell combined with the production's perception of the actress. Apparently during filming she would show up to the set late all the time and she would lock herself in her trailer for hours on end. She would also treat people badly and she would never apologize for her actions or behavior. Tinkerbell might be cute and nice but Julia Roberts certainly is not. At number two, Tyra Banks. Tyra Banks is not all she's cracked up to be. She claims to be someone who's inclusive in the modeling industry, and she claims that she's kind and fair to everyone, but that is so far from the truth. She even tried framing Naomi Campbell as the industry's mean girl, but after Naomi responded to those allegations thrown her way, people started realizing that it was Tyra who was the tyrant all along. Other than throwing shade at Naomi, we've also come to realize some of the other horrible things that she's done. For example, while on America's Next Top Model, she made the contestants change their appearances all the time. Though Tyra claims that she's about being unique, she sure does like changing these girls' looks. On top of that, she also forced contestants to wear blackface and other racially insensitive makeup and clothing. Though she claimed that it was to show off and express other cultures, she totally went about that in an offensive and mean way. And Tyra even shamed people for the way they express themselves, as well as some contestants' sexuality. So many former contestants of the show have said how horrible Tyra is to work with, and if you see Tyra's outburst on TV, I think that's already proof enough as to how mean she can be. At number 10, Charlize Theron. You wouldn't really think that Charlize Theron was a meanie, but perhaps she does have a dark side. In 2014, Charlize was accused of being less than friendly at a soul cycle class by fellow actress Tia Maori. It all started when Tia told tabloids of her unpleasant exchange with Charlize where she said, quote, she wasn't very nice to me. I said hi and she actually rolled her eyes and said, oh my god, I wasn't over the top. I know how to approach another celebrity. Charlene was just mean. I'm just being honest. So obviously the tabloids had to look into this even more because an actress being mean is somehow a huge scoop and they found some tea to back up Tia's story. Turns out that on top of being a little catty, Charlize would also allegedly show up to class in a bad mood. And she has also apparently been known to demand that people who already set up their spot in class switch spots with her, therefore creating a disturbance in the class. SoulCycle describes itself as being more than a class but a sanctuary, but it seems like Charlize is just famous for disturbing the peace. At number 9, Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon may seem like a nice person on screen, and in other aspects of light she really might be, but there's also a little bit of diva energy buried within, and we got to see a bit of that energy escape when she and her husband were arrested in 2013. The two of them were pulled over by an officer and Reese's husband was given a DUI 
high charge. And in an effort to fight the charges, and I'm guessing to intimidate the arresting officer into letting them go, Reese pulled the do you know who I am card and sadly it didn't work. Her attempt at defending her husband resulted in the actress being arrested for disorderly conduct, but the news of her arrest wasn't the only thing to hit the media. The whole incident was caught on camera. But that's not the only incident people have against her. There are also some who say that she wears sunglasses all the time to make sure that no one makes eye contact with her. Others who work for her say that they're afraid of offending her or making her mad, so I'd hate to know what she's like behind closed doors, you know? Before I carry on with the list, I just want to chime in here and ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video. It really helps us out when we get your positive feedback. So please, if you are enjoying the video so far, please give it a thumbs up. At number eight, Gwyneth Paltrow. A lot of people seem to hate Gwyneth Paltrow for some reason. And though she's never really done anything horrible, I get a sense that she's so mean and so disliked in Hollywood because she comes off as pretty pretentious, egotistical, and privileged. People don't really see Gwyneth as the average person or someone that they can really relate to, which can rub people the wrong way. The Goop founder likes flaunting her wealth and materialistic things and makes it seem like it's something that everyone has or can afford. For example, her Goop must have lists of clothing pieces and other things include things that cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. On top of that, she came from a wealthy family, so being someone who's always been rich, she doesn't really know how to humble herself. People also don't like how she comes across as self-centered, as she always seems to talk about herself and how fit she is and how great her lifestyle is. She also has a diva attitude and she's been known to slam Michelin star restaurants. And if you know what that means, then you know that she's got an attitude to do something like that. On top of that, she's been known to demand that someone clean and dry the shower at the gym after someone else has used it because she quote, can't touch someone else's shower water. At number seven, Tobey Maguire. Tobey Maguire might look like the fun and lovable Peter Parker on screen, but unfortunately, that's far from who he really is. Turns out that Toby is really just a Hollywood jerk and fame really just drove him to being that way. He started off as a pretty humble guy, but after the Spider-Man film brought him so much fame and success, it consumed him. Towards the end of his Spider-Man days, Toby had something of an attitude problem where we saw him harassing people at a poker game, even going so far as to tell a woman to bark like a seal for $1,000. He also racked up a hefty production cost for the third Sam Raimi Spider-Man film because he needed doctors on site at all times to deal with his bad back and he was only able to walk a certain amount of steps in a scene before needing to quit. Those who worked with him often called his attitude inappropriate and he's really just been bad mouthed by a lot of people he's worked with over the years so he really doesn't seem like that much of a nice guy. At number six, Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz isn't the nicest person in Hollywood, especially in regards to her fans. She's pretty well known for biting the heads off her fans when they approach her looking for photos and autographs. When a fan approaches the actress in hopes of getting an autograph or photo, not only does she refuse them, but she also goes into full on mom mode and she'll lecture you about why autographs are stupid and why she won't do it. The overarching theme of what Cameron says during her rants at her fans, according to them, seems to be that she'll tell you that autographs are dumb and that if she made an exception for one person that she'd have to make an exception for everyone. Though in a way she does have a point about making exceptions for people, she doesn't have to do it in such a mean way. At number five, Michael Phelps. Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps is often called the best swimmer of all time, but it seems like his aquatic skills are really all he's got going for him since he's apparently got a bad attitude. He's done some pretty bad stuff in his life, so people don't think too highly of him. Back in 2014, he was arrested for driving under the influence, and speaking of that influence, Phelps has also been caught with drugs before. This isn't good for his image because being an Olympian, people have a lot of eyes on you. Phelps was reprimanded for his drunk driving and was suspended from swimming for six months, but other than that, the scandal was pretty much kept under wraps. On top of this swimmer being a felon, he's also known to not be a team player. Apparently, he hides himself away from his other teammates when at competitions like the Olympics. You would think that being at something like the Olympics, you'd want to soak up all of that team spirit, but no. Michael wants nothing to do with his team and instead flies solo. Kind of a bad attitude if you ask me. At number four, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence is actually one of the few celebrities who's actually admitted to being mean and being mean on purpose. Yeah, some other celebs might be intentionally mean to intimidate people, but Jennifer Lawrence has actually admitted to being mean as a way to defend herself. Being a Hollywood A-lister must be tough, so you have to find a way to navigate through that, so I'm guessing that being rude works for Jennifer. The actress has said that she is intentionally mean to her fans in an effort to get them to
them to leave her alone. Though I guess it's a good idea in theory to make yourself unapproachable, it might also lead you to losing all of your fans in general. Jennifer really rose to fame through the Hunger Games films, and at the time she would have had a younger fan base, so being mean to these kids was probably taking things a little bit too far. There's really no reason to be afraid of preteens, unless they're on TikTok. At number three, Amber Heard. I couldn't make this mean celebrity list without including Amber. That's like watching a Marvel movie and leaving before the end credits. You just don't do that. I'm sure that we all know who Amber Heard is by now, and if not, where have you been? <laughs> Amber and Johnny have been the media's it story this past year, and we've learned so much. If you've seen my recent video where I gave you the top 10 worst Amber Heard moments, then it's no surprise to you that she is a horrible person, but if not, let me recap some of her highlights. She's gotten into a fight with her sister. She's been recorded confessing to hitting Johnny Depp. She's pretended to have been a victim of a violent crime. She's smuggled her dogs into Australia, pretended not to have known about the laws there, and tried to get her assistant to commit perjury. She's responsible for Johnny's severed finger, and she's supposedly planted stories in the media to deliberately shift the focus from Johnny to her. Because of all of these things that have come out about the actress, there's just so many people from around the world who just really, really hate her. There have been petitions to have her removed from certain movies, and she's lost a lot of respect from fans and some Hollywood people as well. So yeah, she definitely belongs on this list. <laughs> At number two, Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri, although loved by many, is actually the number one most hated celebrity chef. You might be asking yourself, why? He's not that bad. Well, my friend, you'd be surprised. Turns out that though Guy is a fun-loving dude on camera, he's actually pretty mean in real life. He's got a pretty big ego, he's made some pretty offensive jokes, and he's not a very nice guy when it comes to women. He's also been accused of being anti-Semitic and anti-gay. People said that he is full of himself and controlled by fame, he makes sexist jokes, and is always caught staring at women's breasts, so much to the point that editors for his show have to cut out those moments. That's a lot. He's also refused to work with or even talk to anyone from the gay community, and apparently you have to give him forewarning before he does. And people also hate him because he makes a mockery of the culinary arts, calling himself a chef when he doesn't even have any culinary training. At number one, James Corden. James Corden has brought us carpool karaoke, laughs on his show, and entertainment in his other productions. For such a happy and fun guy, there's no way that he could be a total jerk. Wrong again. Turns out he's actually pretty mean and that this persona that you see on TV is all an elaborate ruse. In reality, James is arrogant, rude, and kind of a diva. There are a bunch of stories that paint James as a mean person. Firstly, he was part of a group of people who advocated for paying late night writers less money. Yes, you heard that right. He's also been known to use the do you know who I am line quite a number of times, and he's even reportedly told someone that he could buy them if they didn't do what he wanted. There have been incidents of fans catching James being mean to his wife and letting his temper get the best of him at times. A lot of people say that he only acts nice in order to butt kiss his way to the top and he doesn't care who he takes down in the process. I only have one word for him. Toxic. At number 10, Catherine Zeta-Jones. According to people who've worked with or lived near, actress Catherine Zeta-Jones is one of those celebrities you do not want to run into. People have had some less than kind reviews about their encounters with the actress and it's surprising. Apparently Catherine has a very entitled attitude, expecting to be catered to her every whim, and refuses to tip you for your assistance. One person even shared a story about how she was living in a condo when visiting a different city and demanded that the other tenants be banned from using the facility gym while she was there. As one would expect, this request did not go over well with the rest of the tenants. She also has a reputation of being harsh and cold with fans. Once when an 8 year old fan of hers approached her saying that she wanted to become an actress just like Catherine, the actress reportedly just looked the girl up and down and told her quote, you're pretty enough I suppose, and then just walked away. Clearly Catherine has some things to learn about being nice to others. At number 9, Russell Crowe. Actor Russell Crowe is able to command an audience while performing and captivate them with his talent but that seems to be about the extent of his pleasant connection with others since he's reportedly a very mean person. There have been a number of reports detailing his violent outbursts from yelling at people like fans and co-workers to fighting with his bodyguards. At one point he was even rude to a large group of people while on an Irish talk show where he was performing a Johnny Cash song. The audience tried clapping along to the song but couldn't keep in time and this made Russell mad and he told them to shut up. Russell has also had a violent outburst with hotel staff in 2005 where he threw a phone at one of its employees, resulting in him getting charged with felony assault. And to top it all off, he even had some harsh words for his fellow actors, calling George Clooney, Harrison Ford, and Robert De Niro sellouts. At number 8, John Hamm. 
Some have pointed out that John Hamm's Mad Men character, Don Draper, is played a little bit too well. The mean and arrogant character seems to share a number of similarities to John's own personality, according to some, which sort of makes the two of them mold into one uber mean guy. According to Kathy Griffin, of all people, John Hamm is a rude guy and she exposed him in her book, Celebrity Run-Ins My A to Z Index. In her book, Kathy recounts her unpleasant encounter with John at a dinner party. John apparently questioned why Kathy was at the event in the first place, and then later on he approached her again, clearly intoxicated, while she was talking to Jack Nicholson and whispered in her ear saying, quote, you know your Emmy isn't a real Emmy and you're so old. That's exactly how it was built. Old. Yeah, sure he's in the Skip the Dishes commercial, but frankly, I'd like to skip him. At number 7, Taylor Swift. A lot of people don't like Taylor Swift because of her attitude. She's really talented and has a lot of success in the industry, but some people have said that her attitude has rubbed them the wrong way. Taylor has been seen feuding with a lot of women in the industry, even though she preaches about spreading positivity and feminism. On top of that, the fact that she writes so many songs about her exes make people see her negatively because these relationships may not deserve to be exposed in the way that she does. In the past, Taylor has also faced cultural appropriation scandals because of her music video for the song Shake It Off. And to dig deeper, some people have also discovered that Taylor used to be a bully in high school. Basically, some people say that her quirky girl next door sort of look is all fake and that she's really just a bully. But what do you guys think? At number 6, Ben Stiller. Though many people know him as this super funny guy, behind closed doors, it seems as though he's quite the opposite. People who know or have worked with Ben in the past have exposed some of his mean behavior and it's pretty shocking. According to those who worked with him on the set of Tropic Thunder, he was very controlling and mean to just about everyone. He reportedly had a meltdown on set when his Diet Coke didn't have exactly two ice cubes in it, and he even had someone fired because they didn't put enough sugar in his coffee. Ben even forced his assistant to stand out in the parking lot in his designated parking space even though it already had a sign saying that it was reserved. Ben also freaked out on a female assistant that he had and refused to come back to set until she was replaced by a male assistant. Being an assistant to the stars can often pay well, but I don't think you could ever pay me enough to endure Ben Stiller's treatment of others. Halfway number five, Kiefer Sutherland. Apparently Sutherland had a lot in common with his 24 character, Jack Bauer, as both of them constantly got on the nerves of their colleagues. According to an interview with Freddie Prinze Jr., he claimed that Sutherland was very unprofessional and he hated working with him on 24. Prince Jr. said, quote, I did 24, it was terrible. I hated every moment of it. With him adding that Sutherland was the most unprofessional person that he ever worked with. And he felt so sternly about it, he would say it to his face if he ever confronted him about it. Another co-star also spoke about her disdain for Sutherland, saying that working with him was very hard because he's a very angry person angry with himself and others, which he took out on anyone who got in his way. At number four, Cuba Gooding Jr. There is a lot that could be said about Cuba Gooding Jr. Firstly, it looks as though Cuba has quite a short temper. Once at a bar in New Orleans, some fans approached him asking for a photo, and instead of politely declining, he started yelling and swearing at those who asked for anything from him. Naturally, this caused a scene, but when the bartender asked him to leave, he responded by shoving her against a wall. Yeah. Lovely. This isn't the only time he's laid his hands on a woman though, because along with a bad temper, Cuba also has a record of having inappropriate or unwanted actions with women. His alleged victims have come forward accusing the actor of things from unwanted touching, to making inappropriate remarks, and creating uncomfortable environments by displaying unwanted flirtatious advances. Cuba has actually faced a number of lawsuits regarding his inappropriate behavior around women, and a number of women have come forward to share their unwanted encounters with him. Obviously, I can't go into detail about the things he's been accused of for YouTube reasons, but if you really want to know, it's on the internet for you to read. Bottom line, this guy is not nice at all. At number three, Neil deGrasse Tyson. You may know Neil deGrasse Tyson for being a Pluto hater or for his time on TV having guest spots on The Big Bang Theory and for hosting the show Cosmos, but after today, you may know him for being a bad guy. First off, let's talk about his tweeting habits. People know him for his obnoxious opinions on sci-fi movies as he likes to pick them apart for their scientific inaccuracies on Twitter, but he's also angered people for being insensitive. In 2019, after the US experienced a pair of mass shootings in Texas and Ohio, Tyson took to Twitter seemingly defending the gun violence, saying that more people have died for medical reasons or from accidents in those two days than from the shootings. 
He faced backlash for this tone deaf tweet, but he's also faced backlash in the past for more serious issues. Other than his offensive tweets, he's also been accused of assault and harassment in the past. Three women have come forward to accuse a scientist of assaulting them, and one of these women claims that Neil gave her a substance and had non-consensual relations with her. Though he ended up writing this incident off as false memory. I was shocked to hear about Neil, and I'm sure I'm definitely not the only one who didn't know about this. At number two, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan had her Hollywood fall from grace, and even though we still talk about her, she doesn't hold the same notoriety as she once did. There are a lot of factors that play into that, but one of those being her reputation of rubbing people the wrong way. There are people who say that she's entitled because she gained fame at such a young age, so she expects everyone to bow down to her in a way. She's also been called a liar after lying to police on multiple occasions, and Paris Hilton even called her a pathological liar after Lindsay claimed to have handled Whitney Houston's body bag while volunteering at a morgue. On top of that, she's apparently a nightmare to work with because she damages sets and steals props and has a reputation for holding up production. She's known to berate her assistants for the littlest things and she's known to manipulate people into getting her own way. There are a number of people who have horror stories about Lindsay making her out to be less than kind. At number one, Shia LaBeouf. There is a lot to talk about when it comes to Shia LaBeouf. He is definitely a mean person because of the things that he's been accused of, including abuse, racism, and ableism. Shia was criticized for his behavior at the 2020 Oscars because he was being impatient with his co-presenter Zach Gottsagen. Zach became the first person with Down syndrome to present at the Academy Awards, and Shia was seen getting tense and rushing Zach along with his presentation, which was seen as offensive and ableist. On top of that, Shia has been accused of racism after footage showed him going on a racist rant towards a black police officer when he was arrested in 2017. And most recently, Shia has been facing backlash for allegedly abusing his ex-girlfriend FKA Twigs as she filed a lawsuit against him detailing some of the things that she endured while with him. Shia has a history of hurting others in many different ways, but the bottom line is that he's just not a nice guy. At number 10, Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball was a star, super talented, a trailblazer for women in comedy, and someone who seemed to have a bright and fun personality. But according to some people who worked with her or had met the Hollywood star, Lucille wasn't all that nice to everyone she met. Some fans reported having unpleasant encounters with her, saying that she could be quite rude at times, and some celebs at the time had said things like that as well. Apparently shows were a little apprehensive about booking Lucille because she could be mean to other guests and staff, and they just didn't want to deal with the drama. Others who worked alongside the actress revealed that she didn't like interacting with The Help and got a reputation amongst flight attendants for being mean and refusing to speak to them when they would ask for her drink order or other things that she might need, and directed them to talk to her assistant instead. She would also refuse to talk to anyone she considered lower than she was in the entertainment industry. She was still a star, but maybe not so much in the eyes of those she worked with. At number 9, Jerry Seinfeld. I don't know about you guys, but when I noticed that a lot of people think that Jerry Seinfeld is mean, I was a little shocked. I mean, I don't know much about the guy, but I just didn't peg him as being the mean type. Most people People don't like him because his humor goes a little too far, which I can totally understand. Some examples of crude humor from his show, Comedians in the Car Getting Coffee, include jokes about Harvey Weinstein and poking fun at the Me Too movement, as well as joking about assault and using words like gay in a derogatory manner. Also, he apparently doesn't like young people. According to sources, Jerry has refused to speak at colleges because he says students these days are too sensitive. What are your opinions on Jerry? Like I said, I don't know much about him apart from the B movie, so what are your thoughts? Is his humor too crude, or are there other reasons you may or may not like him? If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider leaving a like on this video. We love seeing you guys supporting the channel, and it really helps us out. At number 8, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase is known for being in National Lampoon and the show community, but is also known around Hollywood as being kind of a jerk. There are a bunch of articles and books and interviews of people talking about their experiences with the actor and how mean he can be. There are even stories in the book Live from New York that detail the times that Chase Chase has been mean to staff, writers, interns, and other hosts. Will Ferrell and Bill Murray are among those who don't like Chase because of the way he's treated others. Will Ferrell has said that he doesn't like Chevy because of the way he treats some female staff members. But it's not just the people on set that have been disrespected by the actor. Fans have also had horrible experiences with him. There was reportedly one incident 
incident where Chevy called a server at a restaurant a gay slur because his usual table wasn't ready. And there was another unpleasant fan encounter where one of his supporters went to greet the actor backstage at a theater and he got slapped in the face. I think you'd want to stay away from this guy because he doesn't sound very friendly. At number seven, Carrie Underwood. This one was a little surprising to me, but according to those who've encountered Carrie Underwood, she's not as nice as you'd think. Apparently, Carrie is sometimes known to be quite rude and arrogant. Carrie is reportedly rude to other celebrities and often snaps at them, expecting utter perfection or nothing at all. She once told Leighton Meester to quote, get out there and not F it up at an award show, and when someone spoke up about that kind of attitude, Carrie just replied saying quote, she'll get over it. Carrie has also admitted to being less than hospitable towards fans and even being selfish and closed off around them. There have even been reports of Carrie being a song stealer. A singer-songwriter sued Carrie, the NFL, and NBC for having allegedly stolen a song that she had written in 2016, saying that they plagiarized it and were using it to introduce Sunday Night Football. The suit was later dropped, but it still left people wondering if that's all she's allegedly stolen. At number six, Pierce Brosnan. During an episode of The Late Late Show in 2017, James Corden spilled the tea on the rudest celebrity he's ever met, and it took some people by surprise. During a segment of Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts, guest Khloe Kardashian asked James about his worst experience with a celebrity, and James did not hold back. He told viewers about a run-in that he had with the actor at a concert while with his wife. James said, quote, I went to see you 2 and Pierce Brosnan was with some friends here, and they left halfway through the gig to go off. So me and my wife moved into this area, and literally this arm went on here and just pushed me out of the way. I looked at him like that and he didn't even glance at me." End quote. So basically, Pierce left his section for a bit and James moved in, but when Pierce got back, he shoved James out of the way. I mean, he could have just been a little nicer about it. I don't know, like tapping him on the shoulder and saying, excuse me. I never thought of Pierce Brosnan as a mean person, but James' story may have changed my mind. At number five, Terrence Howard. Empire actor Terrence Howard has a reputation for being difficult. He was dropped by the Iron Man franchise over failed contract negotiations and for being difficult to work with on set, this is far from the only reason why he's on this list. Terrence also has reputation for harming women and others on many occasions. In 2000, the actor was arrested for assaulting a flight attendant, but those charges were later dropped. One year later, he was arrested again for getting into a heated argument with his ex-wife, which led to him driving to her house, kicking down the door, and physically harming her, to which he pleaded guilty. In 2005, he was involved in another violent encounter as he allegedly punched two people, and in 2010, less than a week after their wedding, Terrence began mistreating his wife, physically harming her, and threatening her life. Two years later, he was involved in another fight with one of his mistresses, where he physically assaulted her as well. Other than the fact that these violent incidents have happened so many times, the fact that he's also gone out of his way to blame these incidents on the victims on multiple occasions also says something about his attitude. At number four, Gene Simmons. Musician Gene Simmons is known for his performances and music, not so much for being a nice guy. Though people may like him for the music that he creates, you may feel differently about him after learning how mean he really is. Gene has been called a misogynist because of some of the things that he said to and about women. One example of him being offended towards women comes from an interview he did for NPR where he was talking about how money is important to him, saying quote, I don't know what other tool I would use besides money to buy it. Although as a woman, of course you have the ability to sell your body, then get the money, and then with that, get food. End quote. Not a nice way to think of women at all. Gene has also said some creepy and disgusting things about women he's slept with and women in general, calling them names and saying derogatory things, and has also made a number of racist remarks. He's made horrible remarks about many different cultures and races and has even included some disrespectful language in some songs. I'd recommend not getting too close to this one either. And at number three, Hailey Bieber. Hailey Bieber was called out by TikTok influencer Julia Carolan when Julia made a video series exposing celebrities that were rude to her while she was working as a hostess at a popular Manhattan restaurant. In the video, she commented on Kylie Jenner and the Hadid sisters, and when it came to Hailey Bieber, she rated her interactions with Hailey to be a 3.5 out of 10. Saying in the video, quote, this is gonna be controversial. I've met her a handful of times and she was not nice. I really wanted to like her, but I give her a like 3.5 out of 10, sorry. But most shockingly, Haley actually responded in the comments of the TikTok, apologizing for the situation. Responding in the comments that Haley was so sorry if she'd given Julia a bad vibe or attitude. It's hard to say if this was just a bad interaction or a pattern of behavior, but it's great to see that Haley apologized. At number two, 
Sandra Bullock. I don't know about you, but to me, when I think about Sandra Bullock, I think of a wholesome soccer mom. Like the type of person that would comfort you, but give you some tough love. Well, after learning about how mean Sandra really is, I don't think I'll be looking at her the same way again. A fan had a very unpleasant run-in with the actress, and she totally blew up in his face. The story goes that a woman and her husband were out for a walk in the park when they recognized Sandra in the area. She was on a break from filming The Heat, and so the couple approached Sandra and asked for an autograph. The husband was a big fan of hers, and he was a wheelchair-bound veteran, so they thought that she might take a moment for them, but sadly that wasn't the case. Instead, she started screaming at him and sort of had a meltdown. Later on, the couple said that they understand that celebrities might not like being hounded by paparazzi and fans, but they thought that maybe she'd make an exception for them. Even still, a simple no would have done the trick. There was no reason to yell. At number one, John Mayer. John Mayer is not as nice as you may have thought. Though his songs sound beautiful and his lyrics might move you, he isn't the man you thought he was. Turns out, he He's a jerk. He's spoken poorly about a lot of women he's dated, including Jessica Simpson and Jennifer Aniston, both of whom still hold grudges to this day. And he's said some pretty nasty things about women in general, making sexually charged comments, and even going so far as to say that he only finds white women attractive and literally no one else. Speaking of race, John has also used a lot of racial slurs in the past, saying the N word with the hard R on a few occasions, and never having apologized for his actions. So next time you hear one of his songs on the radio, think about the person he really is deep down and then change the station. You do not need that negativity in your life. And at number 10, David Letterman. Several old interview clips of David Letterman's have resurfaced in the last year, and many are saying that he crossed major lines. One example was with Lindsay Lohan in 2013. She did the interview recently out of rehab, and Letterman persistently asked her questions about it, even though she made it clear that she didn't want to be asked about it. However, he unfortunately kept pressing, leading her to cry. Next, he did an unfortunate interview with Janet Jackson. Letterman was pressing her about her infamous Super Bowl incident, asking her questions about how her wardrobe malfunction came to be. Right after she was asked about it, she replied, quote, I don't want to relive any of that. But Letterman kept asking, well, Jackson looked like she wanted to be anywhere but there. This is literally the tip of the iceberg and there are so many more horrendous moments with women that took place on his show. And at number nine, Michael Jordan. Basketball legend Michael Jordan is the idol of many who love the sport. But there's apparently a very rude and entitled side of him that one golf caddy saw firsthand. Allegedly, this golf caddy was caddying for Jordan the whole day. And at the end of the long and I'm sure stressful day, all the other players tipped their caddies as that's the custom in golf. However, Michael Jordan did not tip his caddy and the caddy's first thought was that maybe Jordan was like unhappy with him and maybe he did a bad job for him. So he asked Jordan if everything was good and he allegedly responded, quote, what do you want, a tip? You should feel lucky to carry my clubs. And when rich people don't tip, it truly just ticks me off to a whole other level. Like the entitlement is just so crazy. And at number eight, Dove Cameron. Dove Cameron is a Disney star who is beloved by many for her kind personality. However, many fans were shocked to learn that she definitely has a mean side. One incident happened when a fan tweeted out saying how their goal in life was to have Dove notice her. And while that goal was achieved, but not in the way that she hoped. Dove ended up responding savagely to the fan, saying, quote, that's a very small and unimportant life goal. And maybe if I notice you, you'll realize how unfulfilling that is and turn your phone off because celebrities don't matter. Go find yourself in nature and create your own life philosophy. Aim higher, babe. And if you interpret what she's saying the way that Dove was probably intending, it can be implied here that Dove just wanted the fan to realize that being noticed by Dove, you know, wouldn't help her in life in any way and to stop putting so much meaning on it. But obviously the way Dove said it was really harsh and if I was the fan, I probably would have been heartbroken. At number seven, Jesse James. Jesse James is an American entrepreneur, TV personality, and Sandra Bullock's ex-husband. Jesse is known in the media for his extramarital affairs as he's known to have cheated on Sandra Bullock when they were together, and most recently we found out that he cheated on his now ex-wife Alexis DeJoria with at least 20 women. These DMs and other images expose Jesse for his affairs, but this isn't the first time that a photo has gotten him in trouble. The West Coast Chopper's founder was also accused of being someone who supports the ideals similar to those of the World War II German government in 2004 after a photo was leaked which showed him posing like the fascist German leader. I think you know what I'm talking about. Jesse clearly has problems respecting people on different fronts, and he definitely is not a nice person. In number six, Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan has a reputation for being controversial and saying whatever's on his mind, regardless of the consequences. 
but this behavior has earned him a reputation of being mean, specifically towards Meghan Markle. And there's actually a dating story behind it that makes the whole thing even more juicy. Apparently the two went on a date and Meghan ghosted him afterwards, spawning his hatred of her. Most recently after Meghan's explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey, Piers did not hold back, trashing her on Good Morning Britain. Before him, the other host could even discuss the topic. He went on raging about how the interview is tarnishing the reputation of Britain around the world and hurting everything the Queen has worked so hard for. After the outrage from viewers, Piers decided to step down from the show. At number 5, Vanessa Hudgens. When you think about Vanessa Hudgens, most people would picture her in High School Musical. For years, she carried around that Disney vibe, but after learning about her dark side, you may change your thoughts about her. Basically, Vanessa often lets her jealousy get the best of her, and oftentimes, this leads to people getting their feelings hurt. Take for example this one time when a fan approached Vanessa's ex, Zac Efron. The couple were out shopping at a department store when a young fan went up to Zac to tell him how much she loved him. She was apparently super nervous and stumbling over her words, and so instead of being an understanding and respectful person, Vanessa instead started making fun of the young fan. She started laughing at the poor girl and humiliated her in front of her celebrity crush. The other shoppers were shocked at Vanessa's behavior, but this apparently wasn't a new thing since Vanessa had reportedly told sources that she found fans to be obnoxious. Fans aren't the only ones to feel her wrath either, and she was rumored to have bullied Selena Gomez as well on a few occasions. And at number 4, Patrick Dempsey. McDreamy was the lovable and kind hero in the hit show Grey's Anatomy, but his behavior when the cameras were not rolling was completely different. And apparently he was such a diva, he ended up being fired from the show. Shonda Rhimes, the show's creator, head writer, executive producer, and showrunner, announced that she adopted a quote, no a-holes policy, apparently after working with Dempsey. Allegedly, a big part of the reason that he was fired is because he was disrespectful to the crew of the show. When he was killed off the 15th season, fans were shocked, but those close to the show knew it was a long time coming. A source close to the situation told Radar Online that Rhymes had no choice but to fire Dempsey. Quote, he had been showing up late and was holding a production because he couldn't remember his lines. At number three, Adam Levine. Well, we talked about Christina Aguilera, so next up on the voice cast list is Adam Levine, and boy, is there some tea. Though Adam has cleaned up his act a bit in recent years after settling down, there was a time that he was not a nice guy. In the past, Adam has trash talked a lot of his exes, making for some pretty toxic energy. And of course, we have to mention his feuding with Christina Aguilera. He's also had beefs with Lady Gaga and Miley Cyrus just because he was very nitpicky about their music for no reason really. And he's also been in several arguments with other voice co-stars as well. Adam has also been accused of being a homewrecker because he had an alleged affair with Jessica Simpson. And he's also given some inappropriate details about his love life that I'm sure his partner would have liked to have been kept secret. But I think the thing that tops this all off is the fact that Adam has said in the past that he quote, didn't give autographs to ugly chicks. Two words, toxic energy. And finally at number one, Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry is best known as the lovable Chandler from Friends, but his personality in real life is anything but. And sadly, an intern found that out the hard way. Apparently he showed up to the studio because he was on a press tour, but when Perry arrived, he threw a huge tantrum and refused to participate in the press tour. And apparently all that stress that was put on the people working there was because they didn't get him the sugar-free Red Bull that he requested. Even though he didn't want to do the interview, he was forced to because of a contract. But he made sure to do the absolute bare minimum, and he was terrible on camera. Then when he went to leave, he refused to use the car his publicist got him because it wasn't up to his standards, and he got his own car instead. And apparently after all that, his publicist was in tears. I don't blame her, I probably would be too. At number 10, Kim Kardashian. Kim K is definitely no stranger to scandal. It seems like every few weeks she's in the news about something and her fans, haters, and news sources alike are talking about her latest scandal, either defending or scrutinizing her for it. Though she's faced backlash for political drama and for taking vacations during the pandemic, one of her longest standing dramas is her cultural appropriation. Many of the things Kim posts or advertises gets called out for cultural appropriation. Back when she first launched her shapewear line Skims, she faced backlash for its original name being Kimono as it was seen as offensive to the Japanese community. She's also been called out for appropriating black culture as well because of the hairstyles that she's worn and for black fishing. Kim has been seen wearing cornrows and posing with darkened tans on multiple occasions which has angered many people. She as well as many other members of her family have been called out for these kinds of actions and the 
the fact that this keeps happening kind of says a lot about them. At number nine, Drake Bell. I think most people know about Drake Bell from his time on Nickelodeon, specifically for his role in the show Drake and Josh. Drake Bell was a big part of a lot of people's childhoods, but his past actions may surprise you. In August 2020, Drake was accused of mistreating his ex-girlfriend, Melissa Lingefeld, after she took to TikTok to make a video detailing her experiences with the actor. Melissa told fans on TikTok that during her relationship with Drake, which lasted from August 2006 to February 2009, she endured physical and verbal mistreatment from her partner. The pair started dating when Melissa was 16, and after a year of dating, she claimed that the quote, worst type of verbal mistreatment you could ever imagine began. She then detailed some of the physical mistreatment that she endured as well. She also brought to light some of the messages that suggested other inappropriate relationships that Drake has had in the past. Drake denies these allegations, but support and praise for telling her story was still given to Melissa regardless. Before I carry on with this list, I'd like to ask you guys to please consider leaving a like on this video if you are enjoying it so far. It really helps the channel out and we love seeing your support as well. At number eight, Bruce Willis. Actor Bruce Willis has had a great career making great movies and basking in fame, but it seems as though he's not all that great in real life. Though his films are often very successful, it all comes at a price that those who've worked alongside him have had to pay. Apparently, Bruce is a nightmare to work with as he's gotten into some conflicts with others on set, and people just really hate working with him. Before Die Hard launched his film career, he was brought into stardom after working on the show Moonlighting alongside his co-star Sybil Shepard. In 2005, Shepard told sources that there came a point where her relationship with Bruce became volatile and they clashed a lot on set. There was reportedly constant bickering and it was just a toxic environment. But Sybil isn't the only one to have clashed with Bruce while working together. Filmmaker Kevin Smith has also had his troubles with working with Bruce while filming the 2010 film Cop Out. He told sources that though he said that Bruce was his hero in past productions, that opinion completely went out the window after saying that working with Bruce was very difficult. When talking about their time together on set, he turned out to be the unhappiest, most bitter, and meanest emo B word I have ever met at any job I've held down, and mind you, I've worked at Domino's Pizza. What an awful experience." End quote. Maybe Bruce just isn't all he's cracked up to be. And at number seven, Terry Hatcher. This one breaks my heart because I'm a huge fan of Desperate Housewives. I'm currently rewatching it right now. I'm on season eight, if anyone's wondering. But apparently on the set of the hit show, she was known as the mean girl and all the leading ladies got along except for her. One of her co-stars told the creator of Desperate Housewives that she was the quote, meanest woman in the world. She was not only a pain on the show, but on practically all of her projects and she now has a reputation for a bad attitude. Back when she was filming Tomorrow Never Dies, co-star Pierce Brosnan called her out for never being on time. Luckily, she's a good enough actress that people put up with her bad attitude on set. At number six, Naomi Campbell. Supermodel Naomi Campbell has been in the fashion industry for over 30 years, and over this time, she's had her fair share of scandals and feuds, most notably her feud with fellow model Tyra Banks, who's painted Naomi as the industry's mean girl. Though this feud has shown that Tyra is actually meaner than Naomi, and we've covered her mean streak in one of our other parts of this series, that doesn't mean that Naomi is off the hook as she's known to have violent outbursts. Naomi has been accused of being violent on 11 occasions and has been convicted of assault four times. Some of the reported violent incidents include the model physically harming her assistant, grabbing her by the throat and beating her with a phone, harming another assistant and allegedly holding her hostage, throwing her phone at a housekeeper, and other accounts of emotional and physical distress. Naomi is known for having a temper and for getting into conflicts in the past, but still tries to make amends for those actions. At number five, Christina Aguilera. Christina Aguilera has the voice of a goddess, but that doesn't mean that she is one. Turns out she has a bad side and a few people have experienced it. Other than being shady at Lady Gaga during their 2008 feud, where she called her some unpleasant names and said, quote, I'm not quite sure who this person is, to be honest. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. And she's had some other rude encounters. When working on set of her various gigs, she's reportedly always late and holds of production and has never apologized for delaying production. She also reportedly had some beef with Adam Levine while working on The Voice and it would bicker constantly. Christina is also known as a diva and working for her seems to be a nightmare because sources say that she's very rude and demanding of her household staff and treats her staff poorly, insisting that they're on call 24 seven. Christina has also had feuds with Pink and Mariah Carey and even got mad at Mickey Mouse once. Yeah, she got into a heated argument with Mickey Mouse when at Disneyland in 20. 
2014 for her birthday. She wanted to take a picture with the mouse, but he was going on break, and so instead of being an understanding person, she pulled the do you know who I am card. Not very nice. At number four, Dan Schneider. If you watched Nickelodeon in the late 90s and early 2000s, you may be familiar with Dan Schneider. Schneider was the creator of hit shows like The Amanda Show, Drake and & Josh, and iCarly, and was a longtime partner with Nickelodeon, so it came as a surprise to many after it was announced that the company would be cutting ties with Dan and his production company. Being such an abrupt decision, many were left wondering what happened, and as a result, allegations of misconduct started to come to light. Since his departure from the company, allegations of mistreatment came out as well as allegations of manipulating actors and suggestive behavior as well. Though these allegations have been denied by Dan, some former stars have subtly advised fans to not support Dan or his past shows. Actress Alexa Nicholas, known for her role in Zoe 101, made a series of posts about Dan after allegations against him came out, where she told people to not watch his shows, saying that he is not a good guy. If there's one thing we know, it's that Hollywood is scarily good at brushing misconducts under the rug, so perhaps he is a monster, but for now, it's just unconfirmed. At number three, Alec Baldwin. After Alec Baldwin, Baldwin is yet another celebrity who's rubbed people the wrong way because of his short temper. He's gotten in trouble over the years for being verbally and physically aggressive, which caused him to have a mean streak in Hollywood. One of his earliest scandals happened in 1995, where he was placed under a citizen's arrest after punching a cameraman in the face, breaking his nose. The altercation happened because a photographer was trying to take a picture of his new daughter, so I guess his parental instincts just got the best of him. But if this aggression was just a one-off, that would be one thing, but unfortunately this is in the case with Alec. Later on in 2007, he was in the news again for berating his daughter on the phone, calling her a selfish little pig, among other harsh things, after he got frustrated that she didn't pick up his calls. And he was kicked off of an American Airlines flight in 2011 after being aggressive after he was told to turn his phone off on the plane. There are a number of other stories of Alec getting aggressive, so I think it's safe to say that he's got a mean streak. At number two, Hilary Duff. Hilary Duff is seemingly one of the former Disney stars who was able to walk away from the company unscathed for the most part, but over the years it seems as though she's traded her goody Disney image for a mean girl attitude. While her character Lizzie McGuire stood up to be mean, Hilary clearly did not keep that in mind when she put her neighbor on blast in 2018. The actress took to her Instagram to rant about her neighbor, talking about the noise and the smell that she's endured while living near them, but instead of keeping their name out of things, she put it out there multiple times. On several Instagram stories, Hillary posted her neighbor's first and last name as she continued to berate them and call them names. Doing this actually violated Instagram's community guidelines and some of the posts were taken down as a result. I mean, anybody can rant about whatever, as we've seen on the internet multiple times, but posting their name to millions of followers who are also able to find this person and berate them more is definitely going too far and definitely grants you a mean status. And finally at number one, Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson is known for his alt metal music and unique style, but now he's also known as someone who hurts others. Actress Evan Rachel Wood came out to name the singer as the one who's hurt her, accusing him of manipulating and brainwashing her from a young age. The actress posted a testimony to her Instagram calling Manson as well as the industry up for his actions and for enabling him all this time. In the past, Evan Rachel Wood has spoken out about the fact that she was in a toxic relationship and has detailed some of the horrific things that she's experienced, but she's never named the one who mistreated her until now. In a published testimony, she said, quote, he broke me down through means of starvation, sleep deprivation, and threats against my life. Sometimes with things which would result in me having severe panic attacks where I was unable to breathe or stop shaking. She also said that she had her phone tapped and had threats made against her loved ones. Other women have also come forward to detail their encounters with the singer and the things that they've experienced as well. Manson has since been dropped by his label and booking agent after these allegations came to light. In at number 10, Terrence Howard. Back in 2008 when the Marvel Universe kicked off with the first Iron Man film, most of the cast would soon become key players in what would be a very successful franchise. Terrence Howard was the original War Machine and Tony Stark's sidekick slash, well, babysitter. In past interviews when Terrence was first starting out, even he realized that he was difficult to work with. After his first starring role in the film Hustle and Flow, Howard told interviewers that the reason he isn't in the limelight is a direct result of how difficult he can be to work with. Unfortunately for Terrence, Marvel Studios is equally difficult to work with and in the early days of filming, they just started cleaning house. If anyone gave them the slightest issue, they were replaced at the next available opportunity. On top of reports coming from the set of Iron 
Iron Man that he was living up to this reputation, it was also noted that director Jon Favreau wasn't exactly loving his performance. Then by the time Iron Man 2 rolled around, he would soon be replaced by Don Cheadle. The saddest part of this story is looking back at that first Iron Man film where Terrence sees the War Machine suit and says, next time. Little did he know, there would never be a next time. In number 9, Brie Larson. When Brie Larson was confirmed to play Captain Marvel, the comic book trolls bombarded the Rotten Tomatoes page with negative reviews before the film was even released. Part of the reason fans were upset with this new Marvel character was mostly due to how much they pushed the fact that she was a woman, as if there was never any female superheroes before her. Fans correctly noted how Wonder Woman was able to allow the character to just speak for herself when it came to sending a message of female empowerment. Although with Captain Marvel, there was almost too much of a focus focus on her gender being the reason that she was a hero. Perhaps the main reason she had become difficult to work with was that Larson's own politics began creeping in during press junkets. In what was a PR nightmare, Brie made several comments about how there were too many white men in Hollywood, which even included the critics that review the movies. She's not wrong, but it's also a very hostile way to start your MCU journey, especially considering that most of her castmates are, well, white men. In at number 8, Natalie Portman. In another stunning example of identity politics spoiling casting choices, Natalie Portman originally left the MCU because of a female director being fired. Portman was locked in to do the Thor sequel, but after top executives decided to drop Patty Jenkins as the director, Natalie was furious. She also made a point of letting every news outlet know just how deeply upset she was by the decision. Natalie wanted to quit immediately following Jenkins' departure at a protest, but she was contractually obligated to finish the film. Although one of the most surprising things to happen at the 2019 San Diego Comic Con was the announcement that Portman would be returning to the MCU for an appearance in Endgame, as well as the next installment of the Thor solo series. Such can't be that hard to work with. In at number 7, Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato had been a Disney kid for a long time. She appeared on Barney and Friends from 2002 to 2004. However, between 2007 to 2008, Lovato played Charlotte Adams on the Disney Channel short series as The Bell Rings. She then auditioned for the channel's television film Camp Rock and new TV series Sunny with a Chance, for which she landed both roles. Now, to Demi's defense, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and struggled a lot with finding body confidence. So needless to say, she could be a bit of a nightmare on set, but it was primarily due to the of maintaining this presence while on top after all of this early success with Disney. During an interview with Refinery29, Demi said, Prior to getting sober, I was one of those people who was like, I don't give a f whatever. And I used that as an excuse to do whatever I wanted. I was a nightmare to work with. Well, at least she admits it herself. In at number six, Gwyneth Paltrow. Even though Gwyneth Paltrow has been part of the MCU since its inception, she clearly only is paying attention to the paychecks. During an episode of the Netflix show Chef's Table, she completely forgot that she was in Spider-Man Homecoming. And even worse was that she had no idea Samuel L. Jackson was a member of the MCU, even though she had been in five films with him at the time. Although at 46, Paltrow wasn't interested in dressing up in a superhero suit anymore and was very vocal about this upon her departure from the franchise following Endgame. Gwyneth told Variety Magazine that she doesn't see herself committing to any more sequels and that she really only got involved because she was friends with director Jon Favreau. Halfway through at number five is Shannon Doherty. She was a huge breakout star in the 90s when she worked on Beverly Hills 90210, but she quickly earned reputation as a difficult actress. One of her co-stars, Jason Priestley, described her diva-like behavior in his memoir and said that she, I quote, truly didn't give a shit. He said that she complained when a publicist picked her up in a car rather than a limo. One of her other co-stars and friend, Jenny Garth, said they got into an altercation on set that started to get physical. It led to Shannon being fired from the show altogether since she just seemed to be the issue and just always had an issue with someone. She was the common denominator. In at number 4, Mickey Rourke. Oscar winner Mickey Rourke famously hated starring in Iron Man 2, even saying after his starring villain role that Marvel heads diluted his character Ivan Venko to a one-dimensional bad guy, adding that creative control rested with some nerd with a pocket full of money calling the shots. Mickey Rourke is the kind of actor that always wants to add more layers to his character, and although they initially agreed to this, he was surprised when the decision makers pulled the rug out from underneath his intended performance. Mickey went on to say, I'm not a Marvel fan, once I did a movie for Marvel and they cut the whole goddamn thing out. When you bring it to the table, it's really disappointing when they cut things out. According to reports, Rourke did not take this decision lightly and would continuously be a pain to work with on each day that he was scheduled to film. In at number 3, Ashley Tisdale. 
During her childhood, Tisdale was featured in over 100 advertisements and had minor roles in television and theater. She also achieved mainstream success as Maddie Fitzpatrick in the Disney Channel series The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Her success was heightened even further when she starred as Sharpay Evans in the High School Musical film series from 2006 to 2008. Tisdale even admitted herself that she was very difficult to work with during her time on High School Musical. During a chat with Andy Cohen, she said that her and Lucas, who played her on-screen brother, didn't get along at first. She told the host that they didn't get along at first because when they were screen testing, she was only giving him just like regular line ratings, so not really being in the character. Then when he asked her to, you know, method act to get themselves into character, she noticed that her attitude was creeping a little too closely to that of her character Sharpay. She went on to say, I do think I became a lot like the character and I think he thought I was really like Sharpay and it wasn't until we wrapped that he was like, oh, you're not that person. Or is she? In at number two, Guy Pierce. Before starring as the slime ball villain Aldrich Killian in Iron Man 3, Pierce had a list of demands before he agreed to even take on the role. While his agency was excited at the opportunity to have their client involved with this project, Guy was a little more hesitant. He was very open about how he preferred to work with interesting directors and weighty material, but took the meeting because he enjoyed the first Iron Man film. Shane Black, who directed the film, was a big fan of Guy Pearce and was basically bending over backwards just to get him in the room for a meeting with Marvel Studios. Shane ran him through the general idea of how he would be involved in the film, but Pearce did end up telling his agent that he was not going to do the movie until they showed him the script. As we're sure you know by now, Marvel is very secretive about handing out material for projects because, well, they don't want any details leaked. Although when Pearce refused to take the role without a script, they emailed him a link that would expire after two hours. Last but certainly not least on our number one spot, Anthony Hopkins. After Thor The Dark World, Anthony Hopkins admitted that he had no interest in coming back as Odin for the following film, Thor Ragnarok. Apparently, he had been so disinterested in the entire Thor franchise that he felt doing two movies was more than enough for him. It wasn't until Taika Waititi was announced to be directing the next movie that he agreed to stay on board. I guess when you've been acting as long as Anthony Hopkins has, you can kind of start throwing your weight around with demands. He was a big factor in the decision to make this film more comedic than its predecessor. He insisted again and again that he would not be part of the MCU if they decided to take the film in the same dark and gritty route that the previous one did. Sure enough, the film turned out to be a standalone classic of the franchise, but his posh attitude was duly noted by executives at the time. In at number 10, Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne played Ruthie Spivey in the television series My Own Worst Enemy back in 2008 and Tansy Hendrickson in the fourth season of Big Love in 2010. However, she began gaining prominence for her role as CeCe Jones in the Disney Channel series Shake It Up, which she was a part of from 2010 to 2013. Although Bella admits herself that she never wanted to be a Disney star. During an episode of the MTV podcast Happy, Sad, Confused, Thorne admitted that she didn't want to audition even, but she felt she needed to because her family was close to homelessness. While that may seem like a very nice thing for her to do, she maintained this attitude of not wanting to be there. She would repeatedly tell the director that she doesn't know why she's there and people would just laugh about it thinking that she was just joking around, I guess. In reality, she hated being there the whole time. Makes it very difficult to work with if someone doesn't like what they're doing. In at number nine, Orlando Brown. While at the 2018 Radio Disney Music Awards, Raven Simone was asked about Orlando Brown's new tattoo, which just so happened to be, well, Raven's face. And here's what she had to say. Yeah, what do you make of that? I make of the second season of That's a Raven will be coming out July 25th. Bye. Bye. Looks like they haven't really been keeping in touch following their time with Disney. Orlando was a child actor on many sitcoms, but is best known for his role as Eddie Thomas on That's a Raven. However, it became evident how difficult he is to work with when Disney reprised the show under its new name, Raven's Home. While her and Annalise Vanderpool came back, Orlando was noticeably missing from the reunion. The main reason why they couldn't have him back is due to his non-Disney-like behavior. Brown made headlines after he was arrested for public intoxication and disturbing the peace after he threatened to kill a woman. Not exactly the best person to be working with after that. In at number 8, Lelaine Vergara. Lelaine is best known for her role as Miranda Sanchez on Lizzie McGuire, and after she tried to pursue a music career, she sort of fell into obscurity. She had filmed with the show from 2000 2001 to 2004, but by 2007, people started to find out who she really is. In July of 2007, Lelaine was arrested and charged with felony possession of methamphetamines. She pleaded guilty to the charge and a $50,000 bench warrant was set after she had failed to appear in court for her hearings. And according to Lelaine, she had some serious beef with her fellow actors as she was the only one deemed to be too ethnic. They actually told her to look as white as possible, which undoubtedly caused some tension between her and everyone else on the show. When a Lizzie McGuire reboot was in the works, they confirmed every character returning, but Lelaine was left out of the conversation. 
In spot number seven is Charlie Sheen. His partying and aggressive behavior made him nearly impossible to work with on the set of Two and a Half Men. He ended up being fired from the show, and it became a huge public lawsuit. In a letter to Sheen's lawyer, the Warner Brothers counsel described him as having a series of well chronicled and increasingly erratic outbursts. They also pointed out that he had missed rehearsals, made inappropriate comments, and was losing weight quickly. They claim that they gave him multiple chances to clean himself up in rehab but he never did. Instead, he cursed out the producer and demanded a ridiculous raise. They ended up firing him and replacing him with Ashton Kutcher. In at number six, Zac Efron. Zac Efron first rose to prominence when he landed the lead role of Troy Bolton in Disney's High School Musical. From there, he basically became a teen heartthrob and at the center of attention in Hollywood. Zac told The Hollywood Reporter that he started drinking a lot and got deeply involved with hard drugs. His excuse was that he was in his 20s, single, and going through life in Hollywood, and everything felt like it was just being thrown at him. Apparently, while filming the movie Neighbors with Seth Rogen, his drug habits started to spiral out of control. They even needed to halt filming while he checked himself into rehab for a cocaine addiction. And then on top of that, his reckless behavior extended further than just his substance abuse behind the scenes. According to TMZ, Zach got himself into a violent altercation with a homeless man on Skid Row in Los Angeles, which resulted in him getting punched in the mouth right before the police finally separated them. A source told TMZ that Zach was obviously intoxicated and willing engaged in mutual combat with this homeless guy. Yeah, that's not stable behavior for an actor that you want to work with. Definitely not for Disney. In at number five, Idris Elba. Most actors that are part of the MCU see it as a blessing for their career, which is a lot considering that most of Hollywood shied away from superhero films because they didn't want to be pigeonholed. Even though Idris Elba had a key role in the franchise, he still believed in the latter and actually referred to working in Marvel movies as torture. Specifically, he was referring to his role in Thor 2 and the reshoots required after he had wrapped on the film Mandela Long Walk to Freedom. Idris elaborated on this scene, specifically when he told media outlets, I'm actually falling down from a spaceship, so they had to put me in a harness in this green screen studio. And in between takes, I was stuck there. Fake hair stuck on my head with glue, this effing helmet while they reset. And I'm thinking 24 hours ago, I was Mandela. I was literally walking in this man's boots. Within six months, we were all so in love with this film that we had made. I was Mandela, practically. Then there I was, in this stupid harness with this wig and this sword and these contact lenses. It ripped my heart out. And that statement ripped mine out. We love you, Idris. Why would you? be so difficult to work with. In at number four, JT Austin. Beginning his career as a child actor at the age of seven, Austin is a five-time Young Artist Award nominee, two-time Teen Choice Award nominee, and Nickelodeon Kids Choice Award nominee. He's best known though for his role as Max Russo on the Disney Channel series Wizards of Waverly Place. Dick attributes a lot of his bad behavior to the tough transition of moving from child actor to an evolved adult star. While at the Teen Choice Awards, apparently Austin threw a giant temper tantrum backstage after a staff member didn't recognize him. According to TMZ and multiple eyewitness accounts, he became infuriated by this and started throwing empty shoe boxes at a female staff member. But then he said this next year. This has been the summer of kick-ass women. All right, guys, in our third spot is Terry Hatcher. She was the lead actress on Desperate Housewives for a while, but that seemed to get in the way of her and the rest of the cast. Her co-star, Nicolette Sheridan, talked about her experience working with Terry and called her the meanest woman in the world. Things were so heated between them that the creator, Mark Cherry, admitted that he had to intervene a fight between them during filming one time. It wasn't just Nicolette, though, that had an issue with her. The rest of the cast and crew felt so disconnected from her that at the end of the show, her name was left off the card that the cast gave to the crew. That's awkward. Imagine being the only one who didn't sign the card. Not too good. In at number two, Jake Paul. Jake is far from his Disney acting days now, but according to reports, he wasn't the easiest person to work with. Aside from Vine, he really rose to prominence for playing the role of Dark Man on the Disney Channel series Bizardvark. Although Jake was unceremoniously dropped from the show before the start of the second season and his exit was listed as effective immediately. Paul had been making local headlines in Los Angeles after complaints that he had been getting from his neighbors over alleged partying and pranks at his West Hollywood rental house. He was then featured in a KTLA news report after he started climbing up on her news van during a live broadcast. Can we, can we do it by the truck? Yeah. In a minute. Yeah, yeah. Let's go by the truck. 
I wouldn't crawl up there. Why? Okay, I just wouldn't do that. I want to do the interview here. Yeah, we can't do it. A spokesperson from the Disney Channel refused to comment as to why they dropped him, but explained that it was a mutual departure and that they wished him all the best. Probably had a lot to do with those news segments. I'm gonna go with the news segments. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Miley Cyrus. Arguably one of the most successful child stars of her generation, Miley has had a rise and fall like nobody else. She became a teen idol as the title character of the Disney Channel television series Hannah Montana, which ultimately led to her becoming a very successful recording artist as well. Although all of that fame and being the daughter of a rock star aren't necessarily great for one's ego. She started to perform as both Hannah Montana and herself, which really did a number on her psyche and led to her becoming sort of a double diva. In her book titled Miles to Go, Miley reflected on her time working with co-star Emily Osmond on the show and said that when the cameras stopped rolling, they didn't really get along. Miley writes, The show felt real to me and I wanted my relationship with Lily to feel real too. I knew it didn't have to, show business is the show business, but I was disappointed. There were times when I didn't think we could ever be friends. We just couldn't figure out how to get along. Probably because you're a diva. Just guessing. In at 10, Edward Norton. Edward Norton is partially responsible for destroying the Incredible Hulk, and that is no small feat. It's difficult to make a superhero movie bad. Just look at the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, Norton managed to do this with his version of the Incredible Hulk, which he insisted he rewrite and had fights with producers of the film's running time. The feud became very public in Hollywood, and Universal's Adam Fogelson was forced to plan a promotional tour that would avoid awkward media attention and interviews. After all the stress, the movie ended up being a flop regardless, and ever since, Edward Norton has never had a good standing in Hollywood, with most actors wanting to avoid working with him at all costs. You never know what film he's gonna try and rewrite. In at 9, Mel Gibson. It has been over 10 years now since Mel Gibson's infamous DUI arrest, which led to the release of his anti Semitic rant. However, though time has passed, the incident still remains at the forefront in the actor's life, with it directly impacting his career as an actor and as a director. 2016's Hacksaw Ridge was his first successful large scale movie in a very, very long time. However, the actor slash director does have some projects currently in the works, including a sequel to The Passion of the Christ. Yeah, those are words I never thought I would say. Shane Black, the writer and director of The Nice Guys and the writer of Lethal Weapon, chimed in on the Mel Gibson scandal, stating, I think he's essentially been blacklisted in the industry. I think people don't want to work with him. While some have come forward to defend the actor, suggesting we give him a second chance, others aren't as forgiving, including the author of Starstruck, The Business of Celebrity, who said the situation is not the same thing as forgiving Lindsay Lohan for parting too late. Anti-Semitism is not just behaving badly. Preach. Coming in at 8, Lindsay Lohan. As a child star, Lindsay Lohan had a hugely successful acting career, appearing in works such as Freaky Friday, Mean Girls, and of course, The Parent Trap. However, as she got older and fell into drugs and alcohol, the media was abuzz with several public arrests and rehab stints. Her behavior ultimately got her kicked off of various sets and fired from a number of different movies, and then of course she failed to launch her own reality TV show. Her career trajectory would also lead her to starring in one of the worst and strangest movies of 2013, The Canyons, which no one should ever set their eyes upon. All in all, Lohan is not someone you'd be investing your money in, forcing some actors to steer away from the once shining star. Making our way to number 7, we have Wesley Snipes. While he was filming Blade Trinity, reports say he was showing all different sorts of bad behavior. Apparently he was showing up to set high and would spend all of his downtime hiding out in his trailer smoking up. He started feuding with the director, David Goyer, to a point where things got physical and he tried to choke him. I mean, it doesn't get much worse than trying to choke someone out. After the physical altercation, they both agreed to continue and finish the movie, but Snipes would only communicate with David and the rest of the production crew through post-it notes. Because that is the mature adult thing that everyone should do. I wish I could respond with post-it notes when I'm mad at someone. After the film was wrapped, the actor sued the studio for $5 million, claiming that the director and cast harassed him because of his race. However, his claims did not last long and the lawsuit got settled outside of court. In at 6, Katherine Heigl. Katherine Heigl has always had a negative reputation in Hollywood for as long as she's been around, quite literally. She quickly earned herself the reputation of being awful, with Grey's Anatomy creator Shonda Rhimes turning Katherine's name into an adjective when describing her show Scandal. I quote, There are no Heigls in this situation. However, Heigl clapped back, saying, I would never go out my way or consciously try to hurt anyone's feelings 
feelings or make them feel bad or uncomfortable or not being professional. Do my job. I like my job. All I can say to that is, sure Dan. After starring in the movie Knocked Up, the star went on to make negative remarks about the movie and its betrayal of women, which as we know is not the way to make friends in the industry. Coming in at 5, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen is renowned for being difficult to work with, particularly while working on the set of Two and a Half Men. In a letter to Sheen's lawyer, Warner Bros counsel described the troubled actor as having, I quote, a series of well chronicled and increasingly erratic outbursts. Warner Bros also went on to note that Sheen missed rehearsals frequently and directed inflammatory comments towards show creator Chuck Lorre. Ultimately, Sheen was fired from the show and replaced by Ashton Kutcher for the show's final four seasons. However, Sheen later went on to tell Matt Lauer that he regrets ruining Two and a Half Men. I mean, he didn't really ruin it. The show was a piece of to start with. So. In at four, January Jones. January Jones, best known for playing Betty Draper on the hit AMC series Mad Men, has been nominated for two Golden Globes and an Emmy. She is a fantastic actress, there's no doubt about that, with her appearing in other works such as The Last Man on Earth, X-Men First Class, Spinning Out, and Unknown. However, she is also known for being cold, with an unpleasant temperament. Well, at least that's how her co-stars have been describing her. It was also once said that January Jones was the one person you would never want to approach while on the set. Of Mad Men. According to comedian Zach Galifianakis, he claimed the star was incredibly rude to him during an encounter. However, Jones has responded to these claims, stating that she feeds off of the negativity that comes her way as a form of motivation to do better. I mean, some people say I'm cold, so retweet. In the third spot is Christian Bale, because his on set rant has gone down in history, and there's no way I cannot share the story again. If you haven't heard about this epic freakout moment, the actor went nuts on a lighting crew member while filming Terminator. Salvation, and the whole thing was caught on tape. The crew member ruined the scene that Bill was filming because he stepped into frame to check one of the lights. The actor started cursing at him, threatening to kick his ass, and he said he actually wanted him fired from the set. He told the director he would not continue the movie if that crew member was still working on the film. The poor guy in the audio kept trying to apologize to him, but Bill was just not having it. He basically yelled at him for like five minutes straight. Now, he did release an apology after that, but I am just sure that it scared off a lot of people from wanting to work with him. Coming in at number two, Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow has had quite the career spanning over the last two decades. Well, technically three now. She's appeared in works such as Seven, Shakespeare in Love, for which she won an Oscar, The Talented Mr. Ripley, The Royal Tenenbaums, and of course, she plays Pepper Potts in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All that being said, she also has a terrible reputation on and off the screen. It has been said by countless people People that Paltrow is not an enjoyable person to work with or even be around due to her coldness and demands as an actress. Most of this seems to stem from her apparent unpleasantness, which is why she was voted the most stuck up actress in Movie Line magazine back in 1998. That being said, she hasn't failed to find work as of yet, but I would love to know how her co stars are feeling. Probably not great. And finally, in at number one, Shia LaBeouf. This should really come as no surprise. Anyone who has seen Transformers or even heard about the movie knows of Shia LaBeouf. Outside of his Disney days starring in Even Stevens, it was Transformers that shot the actor to superstardom. He would go on to appear in works such as Fury, The Peanut Butter Falcon, Honey Boy, Lawless, and Disturbia, as well as the one movie we really hate to discuss Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. However, in recent years, Shia has been known to be a challenge on and off set, specifically revolving around his strange method acting approach, often leading to run-ins with his fellow co-stars. There are even stories of the actor being involved in physical fights on set, especially on the set of Lawless, where he supposedly punched Tom Hardy, as well as on the set of Fury. Not to mention he had a very public feud with Alec Baldwin, whom he had done a Broadway play with, which led to the actor being fired. Kicking out our list number 10 is Bruce Willis. He's known for playing action heroes and taking on occasional dramatic roles, but despite his successful career, he hasn't been able to avoid rumors about being difficult to work with. The director of Cop Out, Kevin Smith, said that working with him was soul crushing. He even gave a nice little speech at the rap party where he said, I quote, I want to thank everyone who worked on the film, except for Bruce Willis, who is a effing dick. It also doesn't help that he's been known for demanding higher pay for movie roles, which is why he was dropped for the third Expendables film, because he wanted more money. Pretty sure you make enough there, Bruce. 
Up next, number nine is Julia Roberts. She's been a huge Hollywood actor for years, and from the outside looking in, she doesn't look anything far from sweet and kind, to me anyway. But sources have revealed that she can be difficult to work with. Crew members from the movie Hook gave her the nickname Tinker Hell rather than using her character name Tinker Bell. Steven Spielberg was also asked during an interview if he would ever work with her again after the 1991 movie, and he responded with a simple no. The two of them apparently butt heads, and people say it was because she was struggling since her engagement to Kiefer Sutherland was called off four days before their wedding during that time. Spielberg didn't bash her name, like he really wasn't that harsh about it. He just said that it wasn't a good experience working together. I can't picture Julia Roberts being mean. In at number seven, Edward Norton. When The Incredible Hulk was released, no one really considered that this would officially be the second entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. At the time, Edward Norton was an excellent choice to take on the Jacqueline Hyde scientist Bruce Banner. Although once the film came out, rumors started circling that Norton was very difficult to work with on set. One insider report claimed that he insisted on rewriting the script himself. These claims were confirmed a decade later by Ed himself during the Rose of Bruce Willis where he utilized his time on stage to take shots at Marvel. Norton would go on to say that he thought they should at least try to make one Marvel movie that was at least as good as the worst Chris Nolan movie. Major shade. Although this hostility is not out of place, shortly after he was fired, Kevin Feige released a statement saying, Our decision is definitely not based on monetary factors, but instead rooted in the need for an actor who embodies the creativity and collaborative spirit of our other talented cast members. Eh, fair enough. Swiping the sixth spot on our list is Leah Michelle. She was recently called out by one of her former Glee castmates who said that Leah made her life a living hell during filming. But this wasn't the first time these types of claims came to surface. One of her former Glee co-stars, Naya Rivera, wrote a book which stated that Leah kept threatening to call SAG about the unsafe working conditions and said that she would throw a bitch fit and then lock herself in her trailer. Leah also works on the show Scream Queens and she actually told Women's Health magazine that she went to the producer and said that she would only do a recording of her screaming twice and that that is all they have to use for the entire season because she's a singer. Apparently singers can't do that. It'll harm her vocal notes. Ain't that some shit. You sign up for a show called Scream Queens then be like, mm, you get one scream. One scream for the whole season. Same pitch and everything. Hope it works in every sequence. In number five, Shia LaBeouf. Most people will recognize Shia LaBeouf from his time with the Transformers franchise, but I'll always know him as just Lewis Stevens in the Disney Channel series Even Stevens. A role for which he received a Young Artist Award nomination in 2001 and won a Daytime Emmy Award in 2003. Although Shia LaBeouf's career would soon take a tumultuous turn. In 2017 alone, the actor was sued for $5 million by a bartender. He was arrested in Savannah, Georgia for public intoxication and he was ordered to attend a 10 week rehab program. Although Shy has done his best to shed all these rumors surrounding him about being difficult to work with. I mean, while working on the set of Fury, he received a ton of praise from his fellow actors. Brad Pitt even paid him a huge compliment during his interview with GQ magazine. Brad told the magazine, oh, I love this boy. He's one of the best actors I've ever seen. He's full on commitment, man. He's living it like no one else. Let me tell you, I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of great actors and he's one of the best I've ever seen. I wish I could have done that in a Brad Brad Pitt voice. We'll get there. Moving on to number four, we have Mike Myers. There has been a lot of crazy stories that have come out about him acting like a diva or a complete weirdo on set. Like the time that he got mad about the butter that they had on set. Or the time that he needed an assistant to carry around a Tupperware of chocolate and basically follow him around set in case he needed the snack. There's honestly too many incidents to name them all right now, but the director of Wayne's World spoke on his feelings towards the actor and said, I honestly root against him. He said that he had a horrible attitude on set and suggested that he opens a children's hospital or something so that he can clean up his reputation. Honestly though, we don't really see him in many movies anymore and uh, this list might be a reason why. In number three, Vin Diesel. There's almost no end to the stories about Vin Diesel being hard to work with. The star has been accused of hitting on interviewers and stirring feuds with co-stars. Most notably was his recent feud with Dwayne Johnson. When Vin Diesel started to voice the character of Gru, everyone absolutely loved the character. Luckily for Vin Diesel, he never really had to directly interact or work with other actors in the film. While Gru may seem to be one of the most unifying characters for the Guardians of the Galaxy crew, the reality is the actor voicing him is the exact opposite. 
According to reports while filming Fast and Furious 7, he was an absolute nightmare while on set. This insider told The Hollywood Reporter, Vin spent a whole day in his trailer one day. The next day, they waited four hours for him. He called a meeting of studio execs to his trailer for two and a half hours to say, what the F am I doing here? And then the next day, work was done with doubles, and another source confirms that progress had been frustrating with the whole crew suffering from low morale. All thanks to Vin Diesel. Taking over the number two spot is Katherine Heigl. This actress has one of the harshest difficult actors to work with titles because it seems like she dug herself into a hole on a few occasions. Like the time in 2008 when she criticized a movie she starred in, Knocked Up, by calling it sexist, which ended up causing a feud with the director and her co-star Seth Rogen. Then she disrespected the Grey's Anatomy writers by claiming the writing wasn't good enough for her to be considered for an Emmy. She has apologized for her comments, but her her reputation just still stands the way it is. Probably because she went as far as actually withdrawing herself from the nomination for the Emmy. Like she put in a lot of effort to make some calls and say, oh, I don't need to be nominated. That's insane. What a fool. Earning the number one spot is Christian Bale. Now, I like to think that he has matured over the years and over time he has reflected on the incident where he went off on a lighting crew member. The behind the scenes footage of an altercation went viral online which showed Bale losing it on a crew member during a scene from Terminator Salvation. In the clip he is yelling at the crew guy, threatening to get him fired, dropping the f-bomb left and right, honestly just going insane for like 10 minutes. Apparently the crew member walked into frame during one of his scenes to fix a light but it threw Bale out of character and he was pissed. He has apologized since then and admits that his behavior was inexcusable. Usable, but similar stories have been told from other movie sets that he has been involved with. So we really don't know if he's still hard to work with or not. But after seeing that video, I'd be so scared to work with him. <laughs> He's crazy. Kicking off this countdown at number 10 is Jared Leto. No one can deny that he fully embraced his character as the Joker in Suicide Squad. But how far can one go and still get away with calling it method acting? Reports from the movie set claim that the actor never broke his character even when the camera stopped rolling. Which sounds like a really committed actor to his craft, but his co-stars revealed that he took things just a little too far and started mailing adult toys to their trailers. He even sent Margot Robbie a dead rat. Not like a toy one, like an actual dead rat. So you could chalk this up and call it method acting, but the rest of the cast and crew said he was just difficult to deal with. Next up at number 9 is Julia Roberts. She's been called Hollywood's sweetheart who captivated the hearts of many people through her different characters, but don't be fooled, it turns out she might not be as sweet as we think. Despite the fact that she has played the girl with a heart of gold in movies like Pretty Woman, you might be surprised to hear that the nice girl image is really just an image. According to her co-star Nick Nolte who filmed I Love Trouble with her, they had to to film their scenes separately because they disliked each other so much. They actually used stand-ins when doing the close-up dialogue shots. Nick spoke about what it was like to work with her and said, she's not a nice person. Everyone knows that. Does everyone know that though? Because I didn't. But the feeling was mutual apparently. She didn't enjoy working with him either. However, I did some research and this is not the only time someone said she's hard to work with. Signing number eight is Liam Neeson. We all know he's a total badass in movies, but what is he like in real life? It will all depend on who you ask. There have been reports made about a strong headed attitude and ego that can be difficult to work with alongside while filming. It also doesn't help that he's made some incredibly insensitive comments throughout the years, some being completely inappropriate and racist. In 2019, he admitted that he wanted to commit violent acts against black men because he was wanting revenge for a friend of his who was raped by a man of color. Of course, the world immediately called him a racist for trying to categorize the personal incident into a race issue. It is not the first time that he's put his foot in his mouth either, and I can understand why some people just wouldn't want to work with him after controversies like that one. That's pretty bad, my friend. Coming in at number seven, Sean Young. You may not know her name, but you definitely know who she is. Sean Young rose to fame when she starred in the 80s mega hit Blade Runner. However, what ultimately ended her career was her behavior off camera, according to some reports. Actor James Woods claimed she harassed him by leaving disfigured dolls outside of his 
home, resulting in him suing her. She also slapped a security guard who threw her out of a party for not having a ticket, according to The Guardian. In spot number six is Sarah Jessica Parker. Rumors started flying that the actress wasn't the sweet and bubbly girl fans were convinced she was after her Sex and the City co star shared what it's really like to work with her. But the feud between Sarah and Kim Cattrall has been going on for years. It's kind of hard to know which side of the story is really true. Some say it all started after Sarah was given an executive producer title in the second season, which bumped her salary up to 300000 at the time. Kim refused to do the next Sex and the City movie back in 2017 because she literally wanted nothing to do with her co-star. Then in 2018, Kim's brother passed away and Sarah wrote her condolences on her Instagram post. However, Kim wrote a public announcement in response saying, Your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. You are not my family, you are not my friend, so I'm writing to tell you one last time to stop exploiting our tragedy in order to restore your nice girl persona. Damn, she did not hold back with that one. Coming in at 5, Russell Crowe. This Oscar winner can nab any role he chooses seemingly, starring in works such as Gladiator, Les Miserables, even though he can't sing, A Beautiful Mind, LA Confidential, The Nice Guys, and Boy Erased, the latter being absolutely incredible with the star shining through. However, his behaviour off screen has affected things ever so slightly. In 1999, he got into a fight at the Plantation Hotel in Coffs Harbour, and years later, he yelled at a producer at the British Academy Film Awards. Not to mention, he was also arrested and accused of throwing a phone at a hotel employee before going on to start a weird feud with one of Hollywood's leading men, George Clooney. All in all, most actors either don't want to work with him or outright refuse. We've made it to number 4 and we have Kirk Cameron. Everyone loved the 80s sitcom Growing Pains where the actor played the dreamy teenager Mike Seaver. But as the series went on, the actor became deeply religious and started causing some issues on set. Apparently in the later seasons, he spent the majority of his time judging his other co-stars for what he felt was immoral behaviour based on his own views. He even requested script revisions to fit his religious belief. He wanted rewrites to some of the scenes and actually refused to do them if not. It was reported that his religion actually led to one of his co-stars, Julie McCulloch, being fired. She played his girlfriend on the series and once appeared nude in Playboy, so he demanded that ABC fire her when he found out. She was actually fired and they rewrote the whole plot. Their characters were actually supposed to get married, so they basically had to change the whole thing. Coming in at 3, Sharon Stone. According to director of Golden Boy Poopy Avati, Sharon Stone made some questionable comments towards him and an entire country, not to mention made some ridiculous requests. According to the director, she acted as if Italy was a third world country, even asking if they had electricity. Yes, they do. He also went on to claim that Stone would leave the set unannounced and have her manager call them with demands. However, the actress has denied these claims. Taking over the number two spot is Constant Wu. She skyrocketed to success after starring in Crazy Rich Asians, but with that success came a negative reputation because she couldn't keep her mouth shut online. On more than one occasion, she's ranted on Twitter in an ungracious way and most recently has been titled a diva for her time on set while filming Hustlers. A source from the set came forward and said, She refuses to do interviews, she won't have visitors on her sets, it's like a cliche, she's very talented but all signs are pointing to a difficult diva. It was also reported that she was rude to crew members and disrespectful to the property that the production team rented her in New York City. However, the actress will defend herself and continues to say that these claims are not true. We made to number one and we have Joaquin Phoenix. No one can take his recent Oscar award away from him. He definitely deserved it for his role as the Joker in the new movie. But in his acceptance speech, he admitted himself that he is not the easiest person to work with at times. There's been multiple reports made of examples where he was difficult, but some of his behavior actually cost him movie roles. One source said, Getting him to sign on the dotted line is a nightmare. Hold dress out the salary negotiation for months, which holds up production and costs the studios more money in the end. Apparently, it costs him the role of the Joker in Suicide Squad and a leading part in Marvel's Doctor Strange. But despite his crappy behavior, he's first to admit it, and he's also wildly talented, so I think people would still work with him, even if they genuinely didn't want to. Coming in at 10, Daniel Day Lewis. Now, at this time, Daniel Day Lewis has since retired from acting, but never say never, he may still come back. The Oscar winning actor was notorious for his method acting, which certainly paid off throughout his illustrious
his career. However, method acting doesn't always rub people the right way. During the filming of My Left Foot, Day Lewis refused to leave his wheelchair while playing his paralyzed character, in turn forcing crew members to carry him around set. Yikes. Not to mention while filming There Will Be Blood, he also threw bowling balls at co-star Paul Dano for one scene. This occurred after Kel O'Neill, who was originally cast in Dano's part, left production, allegedly because Day Lewis was too intense while filming. He has a handful of Oscars though, so do what you gotta do. In at 9, Casey Affleck. A couple years back, two women sued Casey Affleck while working on I'm Still Here. They both alleged that Casey sexually harassed them and went on to retaliate against them. One producer even claimed that he tried to get her to stay in a hotel room with him, and then refused to pay her. The DOP of the film also went on to claim that he tried to get into bed with her while she was sleeping. However, both lawsuits were eventually settled. The incident has still left a sour taste in people's mouths though. We all remember when he won the Oscar for Manchester by the Sea and Brie Larson refused to clap. Much respect for my queen. In at 8, Shannon Doherty. Shannon Doherty was a 90s breakout star, appearing in the teen drama Beverly Hills 90210. However, she very quickly earned a reputation for being a difficult actress to work with. According to her 90210 co-star Jason Priestley, the actress supposedly didn't give a even once complaining when a publicist had a town car pick her up instead of a limousine. However, producer of 90210, Aaron Spelling, characterized her in a more sympathetic light by stating that she is a very honest person who wears her emotions on her sleeve. If you ask her a direct question, she will give you a direct answer. However, that fact aside, she was still fired from two shows, 90210 and Charmed. Not a good look. It was for the best that she was fired from Charmed. Rose McGowan was always better, and we know it. Coming in at seven, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman is one of the most prolific actors in Hollywood, and one of the most legendary, appearing in works such as Tootsie, Rain Man, Midnight Cowboy, and The Graduate, even nabbing two Oscar wins along the way. Now our list is primarily comprised of actors presumed to be difficult to work with. This is one of the only cases where the actor actually doesn't mind their reputation, and if anything, enjoys it. Hoffman throughout his career has been known to be somewhat of a tough guy, and incredibly difficult to work with simply because he wants everything to be perfect. In turn, insisting on redoing takes multiple times. In between his huge roles, he successfully managed to garner a reputation for being a grueling actor, and it is well known that director Sidney Pollock would shout at him repeatedly because of it. Coming in at 6, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer is yet another actor on our list with an absolutely terrible reputation in Hollywood, specifically down to his onset antics. He was fired by Richard Stanley from the movie The Island of Dr. Moreau after just three days of filming. This was in turn due to him fighting with people on set. Batman Forever director Joel Schumacher also reported called him childish and impossible, and this could possibly be why we no longer see him pop up in movies anymore. That, and because he can't act for shit. He also has a horrible face. Halfway through at number 5 is Mike Myers. I have shared one of his stories a few times on this channel after I learned about his ridiculous demands while filming The Cat in the Hat. One of his castmates from the movie described working with him as, I quote, a nightmarish, horrible experience. She claimed that he covered the area around his trailer with tents because he didn't want anyone to see him. She also said he would keep everyone waiting hours when it was time to film a scene because he didn't actually follow the production schedule. He just kind of did his own thing on his own terms. One thing his co-star Amy Hill and the director both revealed was that he actually had an assistant follow him around with a Tupperware of chocolate and he would feed him whenever he wanted them. Coming in at number 4, Leah Michelle. This is no big surprise, it was globally known that Leah Michelle was quite the diva while shooting the widely popular Fox show Glee back in the day. Her former co-star Naya Rivera wrote a book where she described the time the actress kept threatening to call SAG about the unsafe work conditions. However, Michelle fired back at these claims stating, So I guess you can throw a bitch fit, lock yourself in your trailer, stall production, yet still allegedly find time to leak stories to the press. Michelle then went on to work on the show Scream Queen which was ultimately cancelled. However, during production she supposedly told Ryan Murphy that she would record just two screams and that they could use those throughout the entire show because she was a singer and couldn't possibly scream more than that. In at 3, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase has had a long running comedy career, however it has finally begun to take a downward turn due to his terrible behaviour. The actor first built up his reputation on Saturday Night Live, however, even back then he was well known for being rude and antagonistic towards certain cast members, to the point that when he eventually left left SNL, nobody really cared. Chase was of course a regular on the comedy show Community, but then he went on to openly diss it, stating, It's just a f mediocre sitcom. I want people to laugh, and this isn't funny. This in turn led to him having a very public feud with the show's creator Dan Harmon. Chase began refusing to be in certain episodes, and the actor went on to leave Harmon incredibly angry voicemails, which of course leaked to the public. Harmon was surprisingly the one fired, however he was brought back when Chase left the show. 
God bless. Coming in at number two, Steven Seagal. At this point in time, most people have forgotten Steven Seagal even existed, with his career devolving into direct to video releases. However, that's not such a bad thing, considering Seagal has an absolutely terrible reputation that has made folks stick clear from him in Hollywood. There are dozens of rumors of the actor physically abusing workers and actors on set, and according to one report, even kicking someone in the groin when they weren't even wearing a cup. Actor John Leguizamo discussed working with the actor, stating, I'm playing his master sergeant, and we come in for rehearsals and he says, I'm in command, everything I say is law. Anybody doesn't agree? I was like, bah ha 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 ha. I started cracking up because he sounded like an R word. He came up and he taekwondoed my ass against the brick and he hit me with his elbow. He's six foot five and he caught me off guard and knocked all of the air out of me and I was like, why? Why? I really wanted to say how big and fat he was and that he runs like a girl, but I didn't because all I could say was why. Why'd he slam me against the wall? We were rehearsing. And finally, coming in at number one, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis being at number one may surprise a few of you, however, this star has had a reputation for being horrible to work with for many years now. Director Kevin Smith stated that his experience working with Willis on the film Cop Out was soul crushing. At the rap party, Smith said, I quote, I want to thank everyone who worked on the film, except for Bruce Willis, who was a fing dick. However, this wasn't the only incident involving Willis. He was notoriously dropped from the third Expendables movie for asking for too much money, which in turn caused Sylvester Stallone to tweet out, greedy and lazy, a sure formula for career failure.